uh, the first section of this presentation, uh, the presentation is called How GPS Actually Works. Uh, section one of this is on surveying OS mapping, which is ordinate survey mapping, and coordinates. Uh, this is harking back, this first section is harking back to presentations I did on surveying uh, four or five years ago, uh, where I brought in the coordinates that they use, and also I brought GPS into it back then as well, and pointed out things concerning the coordinates, the coordinates that they use, that GPS uses, that means that it, they can't be referring, GPS can't be and isn't referring to uh, a spherical alert. Now, I'm not saying mathematically that this is what I'm going to, see, this is the whole point of the presentation. I'm going to, sh the main argument that we get concerning GPS is that, oh, GPS only works on a globe because it's purely global in what they give you. It's a globe and there's satellites that orbit this, this globe in a vacuum of space, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I'm going to show here, uh, I'm going to give a case for both towards the end. I'm going to show here how uh, there's a big problems with it working on a globe, even as they say how it works. So even if we were on a globe, how they say it works wouldn't work. That's the point, right? But I'm going to show how it actually works and how that supports flat more than globe. Okay? So I'm not going to give too much away at the start. Okay, why I'm going to... Why, I st why I'm starting with surveying is this. When I read up on surveying years ago, on more than one, uh, uh, more than one official source stated that GPS was first used in surveying in 1994. And I know for a fact that GPS was first used in Ireland by surveying in 1993 into 94. And how I know that is my mother as partner is a retired uh, uh, geodetic surveyor. Now, he's an old man, an older man, and so he retired back in 93 into early 94. I think it was actually before, I think it was actually late 93. But he was telling me about the younger surveyors that were working with him at that time who were using GPS, right, for surveying back then, right? And they had the receivers and, the, and they, that was coming into it back then. So I know for definite that if that was being used in Ireland in surveying back in 1993 or being brought in in 1993, then that means it was definitely being used in the United States, Britain, uh, elsewhere, right? Uh, you know, because it, if it's being used in Ireland, it's definitely started in the US or somewhere else because GPS started in the US. That's what they said. Now, I read that GPS was given to the public in 1995, released to the public by the US military in 1995. Now, I'm not denying that the US military had the use of GPS maybe before surveyors had it, but the evidence mounts uh, more towards surveying being the origin or originators of GPS, or at least they were using it prior to it supposedly being released to the world. Because how can it be released to the world like a big secret came out in 1995 kind of thing when it was being used in Ireland in 1993 by surveyors? See, surveying is directly connected to GPS, and that's what I'm going to go through in this first section. And how, well, basically, basically GPS wouldn't exist without two things. One, celestial navigation. Two, surveying. Other than that, there wouldn't be GPS. Slide two, please. Oh, next slide. Okay, primary divisions of surveying, plane surveying, type of surveying in which earth surface is considered as a, as a plane and the curvature of the earth is ignored. In such surveying, the line joining any two stations is considered to be straight. Geodetic surveying, type of surveying in which the curvature of the earth is taken into consideration, the line joining any two stations is considered as curved line. Next slide, please. <coughs> the, this is an XYZ uh, Cartesian system. This is a three-dimensional XYZ Cartesian system. Uh, this is a representation, representation of that. Uh, it's basically a cube. Think of it as a cube. Sometimes it's a rectangle, but think of it as a cube. Okay, next slide, please. Cartesian reference system. It is important to realize that the center of a Cartesian reference system for an, for an adopted ellipsoid may not be the true or adopted center of mass of the Earth. 
The latter is often used for global reference systems as used by the global positioning system, GPS. Furthermore, the direction of the z-axis may differ. This has led to one of the major requirements of geodesy and surveying today which is how to relate global to local referencing uh, systems so that positions in one may be expressed in terms of the other, and vice versa. This issue is not dealt with here except to state that it is necessary to move from the ellipsoidal system to the local Cartesian reference system before applying some uh, translations in X, Y, Z and possibly scale change and rotations around these axes as well, uh, as well to move from the local system to global. The Cartesian reference system is particularly useful as calculations are simpler to perform, no knowledge of spherical geometry being required. However, the relationship between positions on the Earth's surface are different to visualize in this system, and this is particularly, particularly sorry, important in navigation, for instance. The concept of height is also unclear. What they're talking about here is they want to uh, normally try and use spherical coordinates from the center point of a globe right out to points on the surface of Earth. But when they're dealing with reality, then they must use a horizontal plane. So basically what they're admitting here, without uh, indicting them for being lawyers, I'm just saying they're admitting here that the system of spherical coordinates from a center point to points on the surface of a globe doesn't work in reality when we're actually surveying, when we're actually doing stuff because we're dealing with a horizontal plane and elevations above and below that. So we, so for that reason, they need to, uh, they need to use X, Y, Z um, on the surface of the Earth. So what you're saying is the sphere tard is a dangling participle. Yes, it gets in the way. They can't <laughs> use it, and as well as that, they claim it's an ellipsoid, which it's geometrically not. Right. Geometrically, it's not the lip side, but they, they must claim it is. So, uh, but because of the lip side, go on, go on. Yeah. So, the, so the sphere tart is surplus to requirements, in other words. Yeah, it's something they must add in afterwards mathematically. Yep. It doesn't actually have any reference to reality. Yep. But they don't really realize what, that, what, that that's what they're saying. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Log local tangent plane coordinates. Local tangent plane coordinates, uh, LTP, sometimes named local vertical, local horizontal coordinates, are a geographical coordinate system based on the local vertical direction uh, uh, and the Earth's axes of rotation. It consists of three coordinates. One represents the position along the northern axis, one along the, uh, one along the local eastern axis, and one represents the vertical position. Two right-handed uh, variants exist, east, north, up, E and U, uh, coordinates and north east down NED coordinates. They serve uh, for represent, uh, representing state vectors that are commonly used in aviation and marine uh, uh, cybernetics. Okay, the next part here is axes. What that's talking about is the conversion from the Universal Transverse Mercator map, which is a grid, which, which is a grid, but that grid is made out of the uh, all those lines all convert back to uh, latitude and longitude. So that's not, we don't need to go into that. I just want to read what ENU coordinates and NED coordinates are and give an explanation on it. Uh, local east north up ENU coordinates. In many targeting and tracking applications, the local east north up ENU Cartesian coordinate system is far more intuitive and practical than ECEF. ECEF is the, um, is the uh, spherical coordinates uh, where, uh, I just mentioned a minute ago, or geodetic coordinates. That would be latitude, longitude. The local ENU coordinates are formed from a plane tangent to the Earth's surface fixed uh, to a specific location, and hence it is sometimes known as a local tangent or local geodetic plane. By convention, the east axis is labeled, uh, uh, labeled X and, and the north Y and up Z, so X, Y, Z. Local north east down NED coordinates. In an airplane, most objects of interest are below the aircraft, so it is sensible to define down as a positive number. The north east down NED coordinates allow this as an alternative to ENU uh, by convention. The north axis is labeled X, the east Y, and the down Z. To avoid confusion between X and Y, etc., uh, in this article, we will restrict the local coordinates frame to ENU. 
So to explain what, what, why that's important, <clears throat> when they are saying that the, that the, that the, e, e, that the XYZ is more practical and intuitive than ECEF, is out centered, out fixed, is spherical coordinates using an XYZ system from the center of a globe earth of radius 3959 miles. The ENU coordinates is what mostly you will see, but if you're flying in an aircraft, you will be using NED. So east, north, up means that you read positive east, negative west, positive north, negative south, and positive up, negative down, right? Uh, uh, for that coordinates, up and down, are elevations above or below sea level, right? Using ENU, right? That's what up and down is. Local northeast right. down eighty, any just one second. Let me get this NED coordinates. Uh, northeast up. So that's read north first positive, right? South negative, east positive, west negative, and down positive, uh, north uh, up negative, because that's used with aircraft. So if I put in parentheses. Let's just say for ENU, if I say, uh, my, uh, let's say, if I put in minus two plus four plus four, plus four, right? That would be minus two west plus four north and plus four up for ENU. If I was to do NED, I, could, I would say, let's just say if I did the same things, uh, uh, it would be uh, uh, minus, so minus two would be two south, Right, plus four east, and then plus four down, because they don't want someone in an airplane using coordinates that would that are based off of a, a ground, so th because that would confuse matters and maybe even cause uh, problems in the air. So go on, Adam, you have something to say? It's just a point of question because I'm learning it. And why are you saying the way in which they plot these coordinates on the surface with the Ellipsoid model is not to use the surface, it's to use the center of, to take them to hell as the point of reference and everything's from there, locate them as opposed to, like you would on a Cartesian grid, just use the grid. Yeah, well, what they're doing is they're putting an XYZ at the center of a globe earth, and that's called ECEF or earth center, they're fixed. And they'll take, but they, that's yeah, what that's they what I'm do saying, yeah, afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, so the yeah. flat grid that they use goes to the center of the ball, um, and then, um, you plot, then you plot the surface points on the ball as if they're your points on your flat surface that you've taken the measurement from in the first place. Is, it, is that what it's converting? Yeah. yeah, it's like the zenith to in the center of your yeah. Cartesian system will be pre-assumed afterwards mathematically to be diverging from all other zeniths for, in all other Cartesian systems. Yeah and meeting at a central point. But that can't happen if you're going to use uh, XYZ car uh, Cartesian, or even just XY, but XYZ Cartesian uh, coordinates, you can't do that because all the, all the zeniths, all the verticals must be parallel because you're dealing with squares and cubes, squares in two dimensions and cubes cubed in three dimensions. So all those must, I, I'm going to go into it as we go on. No, no, I, I didn't want to go further than that. I, I, yeah. I know where you're going. Um, so that, yeah. but I was, that's, I was just that point of principle where they're taking things from. So, yeah, and that's cool then to make the statement diverging zenith is fantastic, yeah. Yeah, should I even say it within, the, within this reference here? Because they, they call it uh, a local tangent or local geodetic plane. So in their mind, they're creating a big, huge tangent plane to do all this on, but really they're standing on a globe. So in their mind, they're doing everything on a tangent plane. That's how they try and explain it. When they're, and that tangent has to be tangent to a circle or a sphere. You know, uh, so that's what they're trying to, that's what they need to say to make themselves believe that they're going to then put, put everything onto a sphere later on and, and uh, uh, everything's fine when it's not. Do you know what I mean? The sphere part doesn't exist. But anyway, that's what they do. They beg the question, is the easiest way around it. So uh, next slide, please, uh, Kiwi. Okay, this is a basic X, Y grid. There's no Z in this because there's only a few dimensions. Uh, earlier on, I showed the X, Y, Z one, and I show more of them. Uh, but this is just basic. So this would be uh, uh, this would be plus three in parentheses and plus four. That would give you that point that you see on the screen. So you'd have three across to the east, 
um, and then four up north. So that will give you that point there. Now, if you go on to the next slide, please, QE. <coughs> this is what's known as polar coordinates, right? Polar coordinates are latitude and longitude grid, right? Is that, that's the latitude and longitude grid, right? That's why they're able to switch. So that's why the Universal Transverse Mercator map exists, because they're able to turn this into a Cartesian grid. But the Universal Transverse Mercator is a bit dodgy. I won't go into all the details now, because uh, uh, because it goes into selection and navigation and that. But but and how to use it is a little bit dodgy. But the point is is that uh, that uh, all our coordinates are two dimensional flat plane coordinates. Now. They often won't call the latitude and longitude grid a polar coordinate system because then they're admitting it's a flat plane. But it is, that's where it comes from. It's a polar coordinates. And polar coordinates in two dimensions and XY coordinates in two dimensions work perfectly together. Because you, you can, as I've shown here, you could go across uh, plus three and up, up uh, plus four, like in the previous slide, and you'll get a point on this grid that will match that grid. So that's how it works. So, uh, it basically they work together. Now, obviously, there's no tr third dimension with latitude and longitude because latitude and longitude is from uh, celestial. So all you're getting is two dimensions. And you're getting a two-dimensional uh, coordinate. You won't get an elevation. So in Google, Google Earth, for instance, you'll get your latitude and longitude. And if you look at it at the bottom, they will say a height above ellipsoid. But ellipsoid is mean sea level. So when the surveying say height above ellipsoid, what they're actually saying is your elevation above or below means sea level. So they're giving you your latitude and longitude, which is a point on, 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 a, on a flat polar plane, um, a coordinate system, and then giving you your elevation. But that's only because they know the elevation because they mapped everything out in X, Y, Z coordinates that they've then translated to a polar latitude, longitude, and then they have the, uh, the elevation that they, can, that they know is there at that coordinate. So they can give, in Google Earth, they can say your, whatever your elevation is above or below uh, mean sea level. That's what they're doing. <clears throat> Next slide, please, can we? Okay, this slide just shows just kind of a comparison. This doesn't show the whole world. You think just the northern part of the, of the world, but it shows basically how you have both grids working together here, just as an example. So there's both both grids working here. You have the polar underneath the Cartesian. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Kiwi. Okay, uh, Cartesian coordinates are like a Russian doll. You know when you take, you open up one doll and there's a smaller doll inside, and then there's a smaller doll inside that, and a smaller one and a smaller one, and you end up with a tiny doll when you start off with a really big one. It's like that. So on this grid, you have the, all these uh, this is Florida, I think. Now, this is a nautical. I think this is nautical, this grid. Uh, but nautical use uh, Cartesian as well. Uh, but uh, here you can see I've colored in where I've taken four of these squares that you have here, or rectangles that they're using here, and I made one bigger one out of it. But I can also take one of these and make four smaller ones out of it. So this is how it works with the grid, uh, where with grid references, where uh, you, because they're, it's, it's squares or cubes, that you can make them as big or as small as you need to make them. Um, <clears throat> um, so uh, any, of these, uh, any of this on this grid, this, you can take four of the big one here that I colored in and make a bigger one out of it, if you understand what I mean. So that's how, how, it, how it all works. But what's important to, know, to note, the most important part is every corner side and uh, every corner side angle, uh, uh, right angle corner here, everything has to go together. So this can't work over a curved surface because you will have distortions. So no matter where you go, each square or rectangle on this grid must equal in the exact size and dimensions to every other one. That's how that, that system works, right? So each one of these must match every other one. So if you're mapping the whole world out like this, let's just say if you were, to do it from a, a North Polar uh, point to start there, uh, which they, which what, which is, which they have done. Uh, it's called, it's called uh, Grid North, right? Uh, they've done a version of it, whether it's the whole world, but they've done a version of it, and it's used by um, uh, Aerospace Grid North. So basically, every every part of this must must every square rectangle must match in dimensions to every other one. 
Otherwise, it doesn't work because you, you can't have diverging sizes. In reality, it doesn't work. You can't use it. And GPS, this is the coordinate system that GPS uses. It uses X, Y, Z. And it'll then convert to um, latitude and longitude and give you your elevation if it needs to. But it uses your X, Y, and Z. That's what, car that's what, and the reason it uses X, Y, Z is going to become apparent uh, pretty soon. So if you just go on to the next one, please, uh, QE, next slide. This is an example of the type of things that you will get within a uh, GPS on your phone and whatever else. These are flat plane coordinates where they're showing elevations and that of different areas. And uh, this is a kind of a digital layout, it's called a GIS. Uh, but it's this type of thing you will get in your phone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what, what's in, so what's in, the, point, the main point about surveying here is that all the mapping, right, all the elevations, everything that is in GPS all, was all already mapped out and known before the creation of GPS. Now, my mother's partner told me even this when I talked to him. He said, yeah, everything, the whole world, was already mapped out, right? And every elevation known, right? Maybe not parts of the Congo or really northern uh, Canada, but they knew all the surrounds, let's just say. So they basically had 99% of the whole world already mapped out before GPS turned up. They surveyed absolutely everywhere, right? That they, that in the known world. So, and it's those mapping, all those maps, those ordnance survey maps that are used uh, that were that translate were translated over into GPS and are used used by GPS and they use the same coordinates those those maps were made in which is X Y and Z the same ones now they will also use polar but it's primarily X Y Z and even even Jesse Kozlowski who is that geodetic surveyor on our opposing side who disappeared uh, some years ago uh, that guy even I have audio on my channel of him stating that the, the, the raw coordinates that come out of a GPS unit are X, Y, Z Cartesian and not latitude, longitude. So even he has to even admit that, that, that that's the coordinates are X, Y, Z coordinates from a, the raw coordinates that come straight out of a GPS unit are X, Y, Z. And these, this is the digital layout that they create to go into uh, uh, to, that, that's installed into, into your phone and into GPS's units and whatever else. So I'll just move on, uh, so not to spend too much time on it, but just that's the point. Next slide, please, Kiwi. Okay, <clears throat> this is basically what they would be trying to use from a center point of a globe where you have a, 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 a situation where they have this mean equatorial plane. Now, what they really mean by mean equatorial plane is the equatorial plane at equator, oh sorry, at equator, sorry, at, at, at equinox, the, that the equatorial plane at equinox, which means they can extend, which extends out into the celestial plane, let's just say. Uh, so basically they can make that as big as they need to make it, right? But the whole point here is that they're using azimuth uh, all, and all uh, altitude. So it's all as, they're using an azimuth first and an altitude. This is their claim when it comes to satellites. They're using the old as system. So when they are getting an angle to a satellite, right, like they would say with the, with the unit, they're using old as, which is, which, is, which is, and the name of that system is the horizontal coordinate system. That's the name of it. So they're using the horizontal coordinate system, which, uh, which is, because X, Y, Z has to be a horizontal coordinate system. It has to have, a, a, a X, Y is a horizontal uh, plane. Yep. So, and the Z, yeah, so they have to. So they're using the, the, they're using the horizontal coordinate system with, uh, as, with uh, GPS. GPS as well, something I said back some years ago in my presentations. GPS, they say, stands for Global Positioning System, whereas technically it really stands for Geodetic Positioning System because it comes from geodetic surveying. That's basically where it comes from. So to call it GPS and call, to call it the global positioning system, it's kind of not correct because it, GPS would be much more fitting if they called it geodetic positioning system because that's where they wouldn't exist without the surveying uh, element. 
Brian, okay. wasn't it originally called Ground Positioning System before they yeah. officially named it Global Positioning System? I think it was our one, actually. I'm glad you reminded me. I remember reading about that before. Now, I haven't seen that recently, so I can't say for definite, but I think it was. I think you're right. And they had other names on it um, In the before 90s. that as well. Yeah, they had some other names. Before they decided on GPS being global uh, positioning system, they had other names on it. And when I read it, I was like, no, no, this is a geodetic positioning system. Makes more sense. But either way, it doesn't matter what they call it at this day. It, um, isn't, yeah. this, isn't this over as soon as you mention Carte if GPS uses Cartesian coordinate system? Isn't, isn't the, the jig up? That's what it I is. Thought. That was my point. That was my point in my presentations back in uh, on surveying back years ago. But it just wasn't taken. People didn't take it and run with it. You know what I mean? It's like yes. Sometimes you put. It's too simple. Like everything else, that's simple. All the simple proofs are the best, and it's so simple that people just look past it. Or as I said, the whole chat were too busy arguing with with George Netjuk uh, and uh, Blue Marble Science and Rumpus and everyone else at the time. To pay attention to what was going on in the presentations. You know, I, you know, I like those simple things. You're speaking my love language. Yeah, exactly. Well, all you need Me is X, Y, Z. They're mm -hmm. using, and I'm going to show more here. Obviously, I have a lot of sites where they're using the horizontal Cartesian system, or sorry, the horizontal uh, coordinate system. Yep. Um. So, okay, we'll go on to the next one, please. Uh, QE, next slide. Okay, geographic versus projected. Geographic coordinate systems, uh, GCS, location measured from core surface of the Earth, uh, measurement units, latitude and longitude. So they're trying to hijack the latitude and longitude grid because they have to because that's where their globe comes from. Uh, degrees in minutes, seconds, decimal degrees, or radians, right? So that's what they're, that's the, uh, the way they were given to you. Projected coordinate systems, uh, uh, PCS, Flat surface, units can be in meters, feet, inches. Distortions will occur except for very fine scale maps. So see the way they must put in that part at the end? Distortions will occur. They, they'll only occur when you're trying to force something to go back onto a, uh, uh, to go, not back onto, to go onto a spherical surface that it wasn't measured on. So yeah, you will have distortions because you're trying to make it. <laughs> then say you know that, I mean? hold on, hold on. Say that that was priceless. Say that one more time. Yeah, you're going to have distortions if you're trying to force something onto a curved surface that wasn't measured on a curved surface. <laughs> it was measured on a flat plane. So, yeah, you'll have distortions. You know what I mean? So that's what they try and say. They say every map is distorted. It's only distorted because the maps they try and give you, they try and make, they try, they're starting off for trying to put that map on a globe, then flatten it out, then use real-world measurements, and then distort those measurements when they put them back onto their maps and then re-distort them again or distort them a second time to get them back onto a globe. Just like in celestial navigation, all the measurements are on the horizontal plane, but then they put them onto the Universal Transverse Mercator map, which distorts them, and then they re-distort them again <laughs> with the Aversign formula. And then they're saying all, all maps are distorted because maps <laughs> are on the globe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's a no-brainer, like, isn't it? But that's what they do. This is unfortunately what they do. They do this to themselves. But yeah, that's, I mean, technically, like, if I didn't have other information that was really important to give here, I could basically end it here because this kind of like yep. says it all, doesn't it? Yep. Right? But be because there's more to give, I I'm not going to end it here, obviously. Right. But I could. I could just go, that's the end of that. You know, you know. <laughs> You're not going to do <laughs> Yes. Give it. <laughs> I like the way, Brian, you, you hit on the point as you were saying there that what they throw at us. Yeah, of course the maps aren't accurate because it's taken from a curved surface. It's, it's a proper switcheroo, actually, the, the excuse we're given. As they pulled a, you know, they like, pulled a 360 oh, on us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like wallpaper in my house. It's an old house. The, the walls aren't flat, but the paper pattern is. When you try to stick it on to wobbly walls, you get a mismatch of the pattern. Exactly. You've taken. Yes. Exactly, and that's, that's why Cartesian coordinates don't work on a spherical surface, because they can't. Because the XY plane is a plane. It must be a plane. So when bowlers say XYZ is global coordinates, they don't understand, no, the XYZ from their center point coming to the surface <laughs> is not Cartesian. That is spherical coordinates. They don't even know, most of them, what the difference is between Cartesian and spherical. 
because they just look at a, uh, uh, the diagram that says XYZ from a centre and they go, see, globe, because they don't learn. They just are told things and believe them and then argue with us when we show them the problems. But anyway, what can just, you do? Just one, one, one point from the beginning there, just a quick question. When you're taking as a surveyor any of these measurements, what, what type of measurements do you take? Do you take them from a flat surface or or are your measurements referenced from the centre of a ball? No, you're, you're referencing everything. And, uh, uh, like, I mean, this is something that Bev has pointed out over and over and over. Like, the, the, the tools used by what they call planar surveyors and geodetic surveyors are the same exact tools. You're, you're either doing elevations, which is horizontal distances between parallel verticals, that's elevations, what's known as rise over run, or you're using theodolites, which is vertical and azimuth angles. So how is any of that going to work on a curve? Uh, how is that, any of that going to work? It, they have to do everything in reality using a horizontal plane, uh, basic, using a horizontal plane and elevation as mean sea level as your basic horizontal plane, and all elevations above them are vertical, basic, elevations are vertical, vertical elevations above or below that point, uh, below that plane, and they're using angles then with theodolites to work out distances between two mountains if you're doing geodetic. That's the only difference. Geodetic surveyors are doing the exact same thing as planar surveyors. They just they're up on a mountain looking at it, using angles to get a distance, a somewhat correct distance between two mountains in the distance. You know, with an, with an azimuth angle or, or, or a height of a mountain uh, based off of a, a, a vertical angle, uh, um, using uh, angular size, uh, 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 angular size measurements. That's what they're doing. Even my mother's friend, uh, my mother's partner, even he's. I, I went through it with him because he's an old time surveyor where he did everything on pen and paper. He didn't even have calculators. Everything he did, he had to do in his head. Do you know what I mean? Because he, all this stuff came in as he was retiring. So, <clears throat> but yeah, everything is done on the surface using horiz hor horizontal, vertical, and angles. That's all they do. Now, they have other systems that they use when it comes to uh, total stations. Total stations will do distance measurements you based off, kind of like, you know, those things you can get where you can get a, has, it uses triangulation where it sends out a, 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 a let's say, a beam to a wall. Like a range a, finder. Range finder, yes. They're using yeah, range yes. finding. I got one yeah. right here. Yeah, range finding. <laughs> that's what they're doing, range finding. Yeah. Using the two-way speed of light calculation, that's what they're doing. But, they, but, but it's a, it, it, they're using triangulation with that, and that's how they do it. So with, with, a, uh, with the more uh, uh, up-to-date um, total stations, they literally they'll do more than that. They actually map out. They literally, when, you're, when you've torn them in a 360, they literally map out what you're looking at on a screen for you. It, like, they're worth a lot of money. But that's what they're at now, because they're using GPS all the time. They don't need to do, everything's already measured if you know what I mean. So a lot of the stuff they're doing is only kind of like going over what they've done before or for digital reasons and different things like that, if you know what I mean. But anyway, look, we'll move on because we, we could get into that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide, please, Kiwi. Yep. Okay, here you have a situation where this is, they're using, like they're trying to show a globe, but basically they're using a XYZ system from a center point of the globe, but really they're using the elevation and azimuth. That's what they're using. Um, uh, basically, if you could picture somebody uh, at the center point of that uh, have, with, a, uh, uh, with a GPS receiver and they're getting an angle to uh, something, whatever the thing, we call it, I don't care, call it a satellite, whatever, uh, high altitude balloon, whatever they're getting the signal from, and then straight down underneath that will be the sub point what they call a sub-point. So in celestial navigation, uh, a celestial body has a GP point uh, for something like an airplane or a satellite or a balloon. It's going to be what's known as a sub-point. So that's what that is. So that is, basically, they're working out through angles how these things, how it happens. So none of this is happening on a spherical surface. GPS unit is, you know, it can't. I'll show in a while why it can't do this on a spherical surface. Okay, next uh, slide, please, Kiwi. Okay, there, there is a word here in both of them called relativated, and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a typo or if it's actually a word used within surveying, uh, but it might be a typo uh, used within surveying because I don't know I'm not used to that word, uh, but I'll, I'll throw it in there anyway. 
surveying. Surveying is the art of determining the relative positions of different objects on the surface of the Earth by measuring the horizontal distance between them. It is related only in horizontal plane. I don't know if they mean related or related. Right? Leveling. Leveling is out, is out of determining the relative vertical distances of different points on the surface of the Earth. It is related only or related only in vertical plane. So we're talking about a, ver a horizontal and vertical plane. That's it. So next slide, please, uh, Kiwi. I never okay. heard. Uh, one second, one second. Yeah. Uh, Adam, have you heard that term before? Not to get bogged down with it, but I've never seen that term before in my life. Uh, it's not returning a, uh, anything on the dictionary. I was just doing that there. I think it's really, it, it is related only in the vertical plane. It is related only right. in the horizontal. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a it can only be that. It, yep. yep. Okay, there awesome. you go, Brian. Tit for tat. Yeah, it's just, it's just um, a typo or whatever. Yep. Uh, okay, here, here is my, I think one of my favorite slides ever, uh, because this was the one I used back in whenever years, four or five years ago, whenever it was I did the presentations. Here you can see what's actually happening. That green square on the surface of this sphere is actually down at the center, is really what's going on. But they're trying to, to give the impression that this up here, which is the zenith, is going to a central point of a globe, right? But the problem is, is that's just one Cartesian system. The one that's be directly below it, above it, to each side of it, and at meeting it at each corner, corner there, cannot be on a globe. It's not a disco ball. It can't work. Right? As I showed earlier, all of these Cartesian systems must fit end to end, edge to edge, corner to corner, and they all must be exactly the same in dimension. So that's why what they're showing here gives the game away. You don't need, if you understand it, you don't need that else. Because all you have to do is take this square and put it down at the center point there and ignore this circle completely. Because that's basically what they're trying to do. They're basically, in some ways, they're partly hijacking the uh, celestial dome model up to a point. Because they're using the horizontal uh, and azimuth uh, coordinate system. But that says it all right there. <clears throat> so if we just go on to the next slide, please. So this is a very basic, just to show, uh, all those squares have to be the same size. If there were cubes, they have to be the same size, the same dimensions. So H4 will bring you to there. That won't work on a globe. Right? If you make this bigger, it won't work. And that's why they try and say, oh, it works for local level. Right? But local, what's local level? 100 square miles or mile, whatever? I mean, what's local level? I mean, you, you, you can't ignore a curvature. If it's there, you couldn't ignore it. You certainly couldn't ignore it in an XYZ system. It can't be ignored. You can't have diverging ze zeniths with an XYZ. The Z can't diverge from the other zeniths. And you can't have squares being different sizes and at different dimensions or rectangles being different sizes or dimensions. You can go into Google Earth now and zoom in and you'll see they're not all different dimensions. They're all the same size because they have to be. Otherwise, it doesn't work. That's the point. And that's how they actually measure in reality. They use that system in reality to measure. And that's the, that is the system used by GPS because it's the one that works. Now, obviously, latitude and longitude work as well, but not if you're trying to convert it back onto a sphere. Then you're going to have distortions because spheres distort you know, real measurements, <laughs> just like in celestial navigation. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Just like in celestial navigation, you have to measure it on the horizontal surface of Earth and then bring it to the center of, of, their, of their globe at Equinox, the equatorial plane at Equinox, and then hijack the Celestial Dome model to, well, to can't have an measure an hour flex. You can't have an equal right? grid size on a globe, basically. No, you can't. can't be done. That was one of my main points back a couple of years ago. Uh, but as I said, things like with a lot of things, they, they, people just don't pay attention when they should pay attention. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on to the next one, uh, if you don't mind, Kiwi. Here is the Emerald Loyal. I just this happened to show up. I said I'd take it. Here is Ireland in a grid map, right? Uh, and just so you know, funnily enough, Ireland was the most surveyed country back in, set in the 1700s. It was the first country ever to be totally surveyed because the British came in here and surveyed the hell out of it because they had reason for it. They were, at the time, they were taking uh, different uh, uh, minerals and trees and whatever else they were doing here. Bloody English. Were, back, yeah, uh, that Adam Megan. <laughs> and that Nate and Oakley, but uh, yeah, it was. I'd like it, to take uh, personal responsibility for that, you know. <laughs> you would, yeah. Maybe reparations <laughs> are due, Brian. 
Um, yeah, maybe some reparations are due. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I, I just thought it was uh, because my mother's partner. Now, I don't go into the whole flat globe thing with him. I don't deal with that. I just talk to him about something because he's an older guy and he, 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 it, it, it wouldn't be a good conversation. But he, uh, but he, sta- he said, and he said he can get me maps and shows how Ireland was the most surveyed country. Uh, I think the first country ever to be totally surveyed where they knew every single part of it, kind of thing. Because it's only a small place. Uh, anyway, Ireland is only a small little island. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Ireland. Anyway. On to the next one, please. So here is uh, Thailand in a uh, grid map. So this is Thailand laid out in the grid map. As you can see, each one of those squares are all exactly the same size. So if you treat them as X, Ys, uh, you can make any one of those squares into four smaller squares, any one of those squares into four one, smaller ones again, any one of those into four smaller ones, uh, infinitum. So uh, basically, <clears throat> this is how it works. This can't work on a globe. Ireland, Ireland is small, uh, and it wouldn't work on a globe if they tried to use XYZ on its curved surface. So I guarantee you, Thailand, which is not a big country, but it's a lot bigger than Ireland, certainly wouldn't work. Right? So there you go. How could this exist and we live on a globe? You know, if that, it, it just doesn't work. Uh, on to the next one, please, Kiwi. So this is, a, I think this is Florida, and this is just a, an example. I think this is a nautical chart, but just, just to show uh, that here you have, again, same situation where you don't have divergence in the squares. This is, uh, this is just, just as a representation of this type of uh, mapping. Um, on to the next one, please, uh, Kiwi. I had to add in America because some, uh, because. QE is American, and there's so many Americans here, and people from the North, uh, North America. So uh, here you have a similar thing where they're using a grid map across America. And now a lot of the time when I've shown these grid maps, they're kind of relating back to the, to the universal transverse Mercator map, which is, which is a conversion from latitude to longitude. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's just a representation. Uh, on to the next one, please. <clears throat> now, here is when it gets tricky. As you can see, they're trying to make it look curved with this one, right? This is the problem, right? This won't work. They try to make them look curved, some of these maps. They won't work if they're trying to curve them. What they do is they try to curve them left to right without curving them north to south uh, as much. But you can still see there's divergence going on here, or they're trying to give the impression due to angle of divergence. But this won't work. In reality, there's no way this map would work uh, as a grid map. They, as all these lines would have to correspond to latitude, longitude from a center point. They couldn't work as a grid map unless, uh, what I mean is that because there's divergence going on here, uh, or they're trying to give the impression of divergence, which is basically what it is, it's a visual, I think this actually, uh, most of this is just like a visual um, effect they're trying to give you, that other globe, when really it, it should just be a flat. They should just show it flat like it really is. So how it's really mapped out is flat. It's not mapped out in a, uh, on a curve or, or as a curve surface. Uh, I just wanted to throw that in just to show it because people can see these things. You can see that the, towards the bottom, there's a, one of the lines is curving. Well, that means it's a, it's a line of latitude then uh, because the grid maps don't have curving lines. Do you know what I mean? So they're kind of, it's kind of, um, they're kind of messing about with you with a map like this. Uh, next one, please, Kiwi. Here is, uh, I, think, I think that's uh, Tampa Bay, uh, the part of Florida. And uh, this is somewhat messy, but it still shows that uh, 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 the amount of grid reference that goes on here. Now, you can't have any of that on a globe. It's not going to work. You're going to have too many distortions. I, I mean, around that area is not a small area. So in no time flat, two or three miles later, you're going to start having distortions because you're talking about, like, curvature is going to come into it if you're dealing with curvature. Uh, next one, please, Kiwi. This is, uh, I'm not going to go into too much of how, how because uh, it, it's not important on how uh, Sylvain so use GPS, but basically they start off at a base station and with a known coordinates, and they're using rovers uh, and moving away from that. And they can be up to big distances, uh, like uh, once they can get, if they're using micro, microwave signals, they can be, their distances can be, can be uh, pretty big once they, can get the signal to the base station. But basically, onto the, if you go on to the next one, QE, they're going to, it's basically a, a way of triangulating. They're just triangulating. So they're going to throw in all these satellites up above 
but I'm going to go through it in the next section. Uh, we'll go into more of what GPS is and the different types of GPS. And it'll be like they always have to throw these satellites in up above here. I'm not saying they're racing to anything in the sky that doesn't, uh, like I would definitely claim high altitude balloons could help and other things. But the point is that uh, it doesn't matter what's up there. The point is, is that it's mapping out a flat plane at all times. And it's referencing a flat plane at all times. So uh, just the last slide in this section, please, Kibi. Here is a portion of uh, Coventry, some part of Coventry in England, I think. And this is a grid map where they are basically, this is on a smaller scale grid map. And this is how, if you were to get, if you were working in surveying, you'd be getting using and uh, getting OS mapping, ordnance survey mapping. And it's these maps and uh, with elevations and other things in, in it, obviously, as I showed earlier, that's what goes into GPS units. That's what they have. They have those. Now they know the, if they know the coordinates on the grid, they also know on, on the Cartesian grid, they also know the coordinates in latitude and longitude, right? But it, though they are the coordinates that they're using all the time, they're always, uh, GPS is constantly uh, referring to uh, Cartesian and Cartesian only. Afterwards, the comparison right. will happen to latitude and longitude. Okay, I'll finish that section. Sorry. Well, there's no way to do it without using a uh, horizontal plane because they have to use, because uh, they're using uh, all DAS, but they're also using RA and DEC, which is also, you know, it's, it's just, it's still all DAS, just done in a slightly different way. It's still the same thing. It's just, a, you know, when they're giving you your RA and DEC, that's not some kind of special coordinates, if you understand what I mean. It's really special. I don't know. Oh, I, I, because it's, it relates to the dome. Because the, what they try to fudge is the, the surface. It's interesting how they, they, they take it to the centre to use that, that system. Right. Um, in all of these things, all they're doing, every single point, everybody's at the centre, aren't they? They're, they're, they're surface measured things are taken to the centre and then projected out by conversion. That's the thing I'm finding interesting to do this geodesically. You've got to do it in a, and this is the wrong phrase, but in a plain surveying way first to be able to convert it into that. You can't just do it in this all geodesic manner. It's not actually measurable uh, in that way. But what no. gap so far? Well, to do all the things they need to do, you have to measure them all from the center of a globe earth. That's the problem. Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> in a surface Same with, on a surface. Yeah. Yeah. They always have to take the surface. They always have to deal with reality and then move it to the center of a globe. That's what they have to do. The celestial navigation was this first one, like, if you think about it, like, because they do horizontal measurements along the, using mean sea level, and then they bring it down to their their equatorial plane at, at equinox, and uh, they then claim to measure an arc length. But they're not measuring an arc length. It's just a mathematical calculation, a calculated. Uh, that's what, it's more like, if we were on a globe, that's what it would be, kind of thing, as opposed to what it really is. You know, and they must distort those measurements two times over to put them on a globe. And, use, and, and the second distortion is obviously using the transform equation. Adam, I, I, you know, I, I, at Equinox is the interesting bit there. But before I let you talk, Brian, I'm on fire, bro. Retro bill, five, five dollar, five dollar D Ross, five dollar D Ross. Yeah, as cousins of the rocks, we F E hillbillies are all related. I know that lady. Um, no, you you forgot the you forgot that last term down there. Look at it. Oh God! <laughs> That's what they, Retro got... Bill, five dollar super chat. Thank you, sir. As cousins of the rocks, the FL hillbillies are all relatated. Thank you. <laughs> you got to be sharp with these guys, man. That's what I, I didn't notice it at first, and they'll double look at it. Yeah, nice one, Retro. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um, Brian, I am just about yeah. ready. I'm ready to go. Yeah, the the the, this, the 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 first section was the longest one, so the next 
uh, five sections are a lot shorter. Okay. But the first section was the longest one. The next eight sections are a lot shorter, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've put the... a bet on QE, actually, that this will end before any baller gets the black swan. Crap on. Okay. <laughs> but the, the reason why this is so cool and why you mentioned Cartesian, I wanted to fit this in. Anyone that's ever graphed a function, you baltards are finished. It's all over. Did, did you like that, Adam? Yes, no. Ah, oh, the heck with it. Um... <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you know, you know about uh, navigation. As you land navigation, as you have, a, you have certificates in it, so you understand. I think I, I think I could possibly be, and I'm not being pretentious. The only one that's like certifiable in navigation. Now. This is land navigation, uh, granted, but I think I might be the only one. Uh, yeah, very good, right. Uh, but the qualification for this isn't can I navigate. It's, it's do I understand how graphs work? <laughs> That's true. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, correct. All you have to know, yeah, if you've ever graphed functions before, uh, you know what Cartesian it's not fully Cartesian, but you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, Brian, floor is yours yeah. right now. Okay, okay. It says so. How GPS actually works? Section two. Different types of GPS and our uses. Okay, next slide, please, Kui. Competing navigation systems. This is just a basic rundown of what's out there. Does GPS from uh, the USA? See, it says 1995 down. There's GLONASS from Russia, 96, Compass China, 2008, Galileo, EU, ESA, 2012, GPS2, USA, 2015, and GPS3, USA, 2021. So they're talking about precision there. Um, so they have 16 meter precision for the original GPS. For, um, for GLONASS, Russia, they're giving them 57 to 70 meters. <laughs> I'd say it's an American that <laughs> don't know this chart. Because they're really aiming it into the Russians, <laughs> saying the Russians don't know where they are. <laughs> right, just give me one one second while at this point, because you need to share in a Discord. Oh, um, I I forgot. Sorry about oh, that. It's okay. D Rose has saved us. I've got a <laughs> nine dollars and ninety nine cents super chat. I see the last guy's five dollar and raising four ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I drive my vehicle, my perspective GPS is on a whole new, more understandable level. Thanks to Brian, you and QE Live Rock. Here's D Rose. Thanks, D Rose. Thanks, D Rose and everyone else. Uh, sure you want sense. I had a question. Why is there a horizontal with a star down here? Are you talking to me? Yeah, I am. I'm talking to you. Uh, in, in your last slide, competing navigation systems, down in the right-hand corner, everyone can see it down here. I'm circling it. It has a star. And oh, yeah. It's, yep. I, yeah. Um, I, um, I, 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 they're talking about precision, probably in horizontal, a horizontal precision. Oh. Uh, so, say, competing precision. Oh, okay. So the, just, yeah. Okay, they used a star, yeah. but uh, I guess the star is for everything? Oh, I got it. Sorry. I failed to see the star over here. Oh, I'm Paul. Uh, it's just unforgivable. All right, Brian, go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I, I just reiterate this. Uh, this is just competing navigation systems. GPS, Glo uh, USA, GLONASS, Russia, Compass, China, Galileo, EU, ESA, GPS2, USA, and GPS3, also USA. So they're just showing the precision. They, and I just said earlier that because they're given Russia, Russia's loan is such bad precision, it's probably an American that did up this <laughs> some years ago. <laughs> they're, they're really sticking it to the, to the Russians here, that they, they, they don't have good precision. But I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure the Russians' loan precision is a whole lot better than that. Cause it's, and the reason I say that is that they're all the same thing. They're all using the same systems. They're, all, they're calling it different names. It's just the same, same nonsense. Just German so, so, propaganda. Look at it. Der Spiegel, look. As you saw. 
<laughs> yeah, Der Spiegel. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Yeah, well, they, they would want to, back in the Cold War to have wanted the Russians to be accurate. In May in '96, in that pre Hasselhoff, before he brought the wall down. No, uh, no, that's after. No, no, no. no. The wall they came down. Relax. They can relax a bit if the Russian missiles are that inaccurate. Yeah, wall came down November 9th, 1989. November 10th, 9th to 10th, 1989. I'll get it right. I was there, by the way. Miles either. Those aren't miles either. Those are meters. I yeah, they're meters. I was there, by the way. Just want to let, let you know, Adam. In the military? Yeah, all I care about was oh, David nice. Hasselhoff being there. About oh, David yeah. Hasselhoff. Gotcha. <laughs> Brian, save us. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. Uh, I, I, I hope I didn't say Moyes because I meant me. No, no you me. didn't. No. Next. Okay. okay, next. Yeah, on to the next slide. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so differential GPS, DGPS, is a technique for reducing the error in GPS derived positions by using additional data from a reference GPS receiver at a known position. The most common form of DGPS involves determining the combined effects of navigation message ephemeracies and satellite clock errors. Differential position accuracies of 1 to 10 meters are possible with DGPS. Right. Uh, next, please, uh, Kiwi. AGPS, assisted GPS, definition. Assisted GPS, AGPS is used to speed up uh, startup times of GPS-based positioning systems. GPS may have problems getting a lock when the signal is weak, and in such a case, a GPS would assist in getting a lock. This, however, is achieved by the use of an assistance, uh, assistance server, so a data connection is required, and charges may apply for the data transfer. Uh, okay, just before I go on, d differential GPS and a GPS are basically the same thing, but used differently. What I mean by that is, Differential GPS is more commercial. It's more something that will be used by, let's just say, DHL, right, or aerospace, um, shipping, different things like that. What the DGPS is, is they're using land-based towers and land-based uh, base stations to, what they say, improve the accuracy of the satellites, right? This is what they, this is their claim, right? They, that they're improving the accuracy by using these land-based, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you know, base stations, whatever. Assisted GPS is doing the exact same thing with cell towers. Now, have no doubt, the GPS, this venture GPS is using cell towers too, because they're using everything they can. It's not like, well, we don't use that. We only use these. No, that's not how it works. They use everything they can have possibly use, and that's what they're that's what they're using. So oh, they're oh, the same oh, thing. So just are both protect, just say me. They use the ground. Yes, As differential. Opposed. Yeah, they're using they're using base stations, terrestrial stations and terrestrial uh, cell towers and all that. They're using terrestrial. Um, basically, they're using the ground. <laughs> Right, so you get a, a better signal when they're using the ground. And I'm not saying they're not using this guy, but if you could, let's just say hypothetically, if you take high altitude balloons and you use them and you use ground stations, then you would, uh, especially these days, what a lot of people don't realize is that when you're driving along in your car and you have, uh, let's say, you have obviously a signal to your car, or a GPS signal or whatever, they can use that with the next car. The next car can use that. So they're just bouncing all these things around, right? Or a radio tower to your car, anything, as long as they can, because it's all about information, as long as they can get the information necessary to the unit, to your phone with assisted GPS or your tablet or your computer, because assisted GPS is more like for public personal use, whereas differential GPS is more like commercial, but it's the same thing. They'll use anything they need to use. As long as that information can be relayed from a signal source to a receiver. That receiver could be a phone or it could be uh, in a DHL truck that's going from one state to another. Yo, that's what it is, right? So- but both times, yeah. 
say that integrals for them to actually work properly accurately require land-based towers antennas of some description whichever way they use it the way in which it works functionally is when they've got land-based signals to bounce things to and from yes um and just so you know um surveying use differential gps that's what surveying use surveying and there was a man uh, uh called uh, rodney rodney b he don't, i don't see him around now but he's a surveyor he was on our side and he said a satellite can be just a truck that is, can be used as a base station within surveying you could have a truck that moves around a satellite doesn't have it just has to be a satellite he said it can be anything as long as it's just a, a, a coordinate so you can get a signal off and you can use. Um, I can't remember verbatim what he said, uh, but basically he was saying is it, 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 it doesn't have to be something coming from the sky or anything like that. He says, when you're in surveying, you're, you're going to use base stations. And that's what they use. Surveying use differential GPS. And remember, all of GPS basically comes from, with the exception of the celestial part, comes from surveying. So differential GPS and assisted GPS is just like there's more towers around. There's more 4G. There's more 5G. Do you know what I mean? So more information is being passed around at a faster rate. So there's more precision. Because they can use my phone and your phone and someone else's computer or, you know, or someone else's whatever uh, and a cell tower. And you know, I'm going to go into all that a bit later. But basically, they, they can use a anything they... If, as, all they need to do is get the information to where they need it to go to. And Got any it. signal they, they can use to get that, Got it. They, they'll use it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Next. Next, yeah, we move on. Okay. <clears throat> Next. GPS satellite signal. A of L1 civilian signal and L2 military signal. This is just something I wanted to add in because I read into this. And the civilian signal is just a basic signal, right? Right? Uh, information. A lot of people think that that's because that the military signal is more precise, right? They're using a double signal or uh, two signals, and it's more it's for precision. Now they might have more precision because they're using airplanes and stuff. Um, I can't remember the name of the airplanes. QE, you might know the name of them. They have like a big a big bulbous antenna. Uh, a wax. Uh, Sorry. A wax. A wax. A wax. Yeah, A wax. Yes. Uh, and basically, so they might have more precision because they'll have the use of those type of things. So, and they'll have also have base stations uh, that they can move around. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, more I, precision I, through base stations and airplanes. Yeah. Is this not satellites? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I know, I know. That's what we're going to. But I'm being ironic, get, right? That was all. I know, but I know, but don't, don't get lost too much with the because some of this stuff is not a red herring. It's not red herrings. But they're not red herrings, but they just they. Um, I, I won't go into it now. I'll just continue on on the line I'm on because otherwise I'll start explaining something when there's no need to explain it. Uh, but basically, the whole point of mi the military having two signals is so one signal will definitely get there because if the enemy are trying to into, uh, intervene, they're going to try and stop a signal. So the chances are that if they have two signals, there's a better chance of the person who needs the signal will get it if they have two. Right? So it's harder for the enemy to encode two at one time, if you understand what I mean. One signal can be stopped or blocked or encoded or whatever. I don't know, I, my terms might not be correct, but the whole point of it is, when I read into it, is that it's not for more precision. The whole point of it is that the it's, signal actually it, gets there. It's for redundancy. Yeah. Redundancy, okay. Next. Okay, next, uh, next, please. <clears throat> okay, this is the basics of what they claim uh, for a globe is you have four satellites, let's just say, all, and they are basically making uh, radio uh, and uh, spheres off of those radio to a point on the surface of a globe. And it's, 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 uh, they're using uh, basically uh, C, which is the two-way speed of light calculation, as a distance measurement, or, or to, as a distance between the satellite and the receiver. That's just basically. So you have four satellites, with four distances uh, based off of a two-way speed of light calculation to a uh, claimed GPS receiver. Next, please. So this is just kind of a, this is kind of the use of like differential and assisted GPS where you have all these different directions 
where you're getting local mobile service provider to tracking server to your client's PC and you have to uh, track ours in trucks and different things. And of course, they always put in the satellite as it all begins with this, because they always have to put in a satellite to say it's beginning with a satellite off out in heliocentric space. Right. Uh, next, please, Kiwi. It's surplus to requirements. Yeah, according to them, it is. It's, you know, so, but here you have a game. Slide. Just, just to go back to that slide. What you're okay. as they claim, there's the satellite giving its its GPS position because it's written on that line. <laughs> the GSMR GPRS communications, they seem to be the same thing that's defining its position, the land base. Yeah. Power. Yeah. Well, the claim, Adam, is that they're giving all these signals to the base towers, and the base towers then are, or, or they're giving the signals to the base towers and to the truck, let's just say, but the base towers are giving corrections to the truck. So it's so they're not, they're decision not correction from the base towers to the truck to. Uh, well, they are. That's what they're claiming to do. They're claiming to ping to the tow truck and the base tower. But the base tower with differential GPS, as I say, or assisted. So with differential GP, GPS, the base tower right, gives corrections to the truck, precision corrections to the truck. Right? Whereas with assisted GPS, uh, uh, it all goes from the, to the base tower, right, then to the server, and then to your phone or to your co computer, you know, this kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, but it, uh, it, yeah. The only point I was making was that. It, Certainly, unless you're far out at sea, the satellites seem superfluous to any function in this. The towers and uh, are, are sufficient. There's lots of towers. It seems Unnecessary, to let's just say. It, well, the point being, is there a... Do the towers just... And I'm being a bit dim here. Do the towers just provide accuracy or and nothing else or and require the satellite to give them a rough location or... What do the satellites do if... Well, the claim is... this we're, 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 we're getting to that. The whole point is that they're claiming that the signals go to the truck and to the, to, the, to the tower, but then the tower sends signals to the truck, the base station to the truck, to give it precision accuracy. Right? And it could be dealing with five towers in the vicinity of the truck to give it an accuracy of let's say, a ra of a, of a two-meter radius or whatever, as opposed to a 30-meter radius or 40-meter radius with a satellite. No, because GPS is just satellites, whereas differential GPS and assisted GPS is extra precision. This is how they describe it. So right? Do this they need the satellite to tell the truck and the GPS systems and all the extra communications that the truck's in Wolverhampton and then use the, the land towers to do everything else? I doubt they need any of that in Wolverhampton. Why would exactly. you need that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is the kind of where I'm getting to. Right? Yeah. This is where I'm getting yeah. to. So, yeah. So, I, I'm going to move on. Next slide, please. Can we? Yeah. So, here we have uh, three network towers. You have GPS satellites, you have assisted server, and you have a phone, right? So, you're just laying out how your phone gets GPS, basically. Um, uh, they're claiming goes to the towers, to the server, to your phone, blah, 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 right? Next slide, please. Same carry on again, where the, the phone is supposedly getting GPS signals from satellites, but they're also going to, uh, to dishes, satellite dishes, towers, to servers, to towers, to cell towers, to your phone, right? So, this, so it, all, it all has to go through other processes to get to your phone, but your phone is supposedly also getting it, just like the truck is also getting signals from satellites. Because it, it's, it's all making, keeping, what they need to claim alive, right? Which is satellites orbiting the globe, right? So next one, please. <clears throat> Here you have DGPS geometry, ground reference station, right? Here you have four satellites, uh, and they're pinging to the ship, but they're also pinging to the to the ground reference station, and the ship then is getting uh, its corrections from the ground reference station, or maybe it's just getting. Uh, signal from <laughs> the ground reference station. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But the, see, ships, well, ships are moving what they, in what they call great circle routes, which means that, the, and most of the time, ships aren't that far, as far from shore as people might think. So ships might be always within range 
of at least another ship, which I'm going to get to later, at least another ship that they can get information from, if not close enough to be able to get information from the shore. Because if you think about it, what, what, would you, what would get in the way of information from the shore if you're on water? There'd have to be some pretty high waves or something. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details, but you know what I mean. It's like they, they always need land-based things to, whether it be personal or commercial, to give what they would call precision. But it just happens that they have a lot more cell towers and base stations now than they used to have. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So maybe they didn't have precision years ago because they didn't have as many base stations and cell towers and all the rest of it. Right? That's the thing. But now they have more of them, so, and they also have, uh, you know, so as time moved on, they have more of these things that can help them have precision. But it's still all coming from satellites. That's what they must make you believe. Next one, please, Kiwi. Even my phone. You know the slide yeah. before? You don't need to go back to it. But are, they, like, are they claiming like my mobile is talking to a satellite? Yeah. The, well, no, your mobile, well, so it depends. Some mobiles have what they call a GPS receiver in them. Uh, it depends on the age of the mobile and the, the type. They say some mobiles have GPS receivers in them, but most mobiles or the older mobiles and smartphones won't have. They just purely have a link to cell towers. But the only way to find out if you do have a GPS receiver in your mobile is go off out into the middle of the Amazon and see if you can get a signal, uh, if you get your maps working. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because that's where you would need it to work. You, you, you know what I mean? But if you look at someone like Survivor Man, he, I, sh I saw a clip of his, I think Taboo Conspiracy put it out, uh, Ben put it out, where you, he had three or four of these big, blocky, supposedly GPS phones carrying around with him, and he couldn't get a signal anywhere. He was in northern Canada or Cambodia. He was out in northern Canada or somewhere. Yeah. You can get a signal. Even if a dinosaur swallows one of them, you can get a signal from the inside. I've seen it. On the movies, yeah. Oh, on the God. movies, yeah. But uh, yeah. when he did it in reality, when he was he was saying in reality, these things are just weight. I'm carrying this and, weight and, around and me. That was my sarcastic point. You've only, I've only seen yeah. these things work in movies. They they don't appear. Does and, and that's why I was interested. Does my phone is is there a claim that my phone connects in in some well, way? With they give with the impression to people. Satellite? Well, they give the impression to people that your phone's always connected to satellites, but that's not true, uh, because uh, your phone may, wouldn't have been able to take in the signal. Uh, your phone definitely gets information from cell towers. That's all I can tell you for definite. Whether it's getting information from any kind of air-based GPS thing, I have no idea. But I know it's definitely getting information from cell towers, and they claim to put in a GPS receiver in some of the newer phones in the past few years. I don't know how true it is. Because, as I said, the only way to go off out into the Amazon and see what happens. Oh, but, <laughs> you know what that, I mean? But, but, yeah, but that, that, that's different, isn't it? Claiming it's got a GPS receiver is different to claiming that the signal is coming from a satellite. Um, I know I'm being subtle. But, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is different. Yeah, it is different. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It is different. Uh, but the, the point still stands. Right? You don't know where the signal is coming from, but the point is, is that they're not going to have... See... In reality, we're dealing with reality. Are they going to have a load of, let's say, if they have some kind of uh, air-based GPS system going on, are they going to have a load of that over the Sahara Desert? No. Who, who's going to need that in the Sahara Desert? The Bedouin or whoever goes through the Sahara Desert. The, these people know where they're going. Their generations of their families have always been able to navigate the desert. They don't need GPS. So who needs the GPS in the desert? Right? In reality, who needs it? Who... who did the, did the tribes in the Amazon need it? No, they know where they're going and where they're not going, more, more, more importantly. The point is, is, that, is that they don't need it, right? So they'll claim, well, it's not needed in <coughs> sorry, the Sahara Desert, so we don't have satellites going over that. <coughs> Excuse me. Over there, blah, blah, blah. But if you were on a globe and satellites were a real thing, as they say, there'd be no way that you could not get a signal. That's the problem with that kind of yeah, with that claim. That. It would be impossible not to be able to get a signal. Let's be yeah. honest. It'd have to be such a level of overlap that you would, wouldn't you? But they well, you do... could not. Uh, yeah. I saw a military pro training thing on this. Uh, it's like dealing with fighters, how they locate the military, 
uh, in in these areas uh, on land in these more desolate areas and they would like selling these uh, balloon based GPS locating systems that you put up very high way outside of the view of the enemy and they give you a full 3D locating of everything uh, again I'd ask the question if that's the case what you're saying why why would you why would you stick something into a violation of the second law of thermodynamics to be cheeky that that's this is a family well, show um, that adam this is a family uh, show <laughs> but but guys you know speaking about that you know the whole presupposed sphere with the satellites all over it and all of that argument and everything it, the point brian made good is like other than i've heard about 10 roofs because like my my, my in-laws they got those fancy tin roofs, and sometimes I don't get a network signal from Verizon. However, I do get their Wi-Fi. I don't know how that system works, but Amazon Forest and all those places like that, they don't have tin roofs. I mean, trees don't distract the signal from coming through. So if you got satellites all over the so-called presupposed globe, you should be able to get a signal everywhere. Well, Everybody. as long as you're not blocked by, as long as you're not, blocked, see, the signals are microwaves, right? That's right. what they claim. And there's not, and because it's supposedly going through a vacuum, there's nothing to impede it. This is what they say, right? But obviously, a microwave signal won't go through concrete and different things like that. But if you're standing in the middle of the Sahara, there's no <laughs> way you shouldn't be able to get it. Get <laughs> exactly. You're not blocked by anything. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So even even an Amazon tribal member in a straw hut. Oh, you know, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we, we better move on, right? No, but you haven't. No, D, D Rose, you 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 know what I'm on about. You know what I'm what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean exactly. everyone understands it here. Everyone yep. understands it. Yep. Uh, okay. Right. Next. Just, 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 what, no. Uh, just yeah. Say, you sp It's kind of the opposite of what you said. The, the, the military has two level, two signals, uh, and it's called redundancy. I want to use redundancy in, in another system, and that seems to be, again, this this use of the the satellite in all of this communication network and locating. Um, he seems to be redundant in it, yeah? They're going to great lengths, as Brian showed, in the phones, all these things, of how the satellite plays a role. But if you actually look at it, 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 it doesn't, does it? Um, that's why I was interrupting and, and just clarifying. Is it doing anything? I don't see what it's actually doing, unless yeah. you are out of the signal, uh, out of the um, reach of a, of a land-based tower. It appears to be pointless to GPS. In yes, of, we, we certainly in terms of accuracy. Yes, that's what we're getting to. Well, yeah, then that's I what I'm to. very well. Yeah, no, you're right, Adam. You're right, but that's what that's what we're going to. I just needed to lay. Out, I have to just lay out exactly what their claims are and why they don't work. Let's just say that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. A, I'm yeah. not being a smart ass here, Brian. I, I'm learning as I'm going along, and I'm listening. I'm looking at. No, you understand. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're getting it exactly. It's like you have to start scratching your head, going, "What do they have?" Because it seems to me that without any land-based stuff, they don't have anything. If you understand what I mean. But, yeah, that's so, be, that's becoming quite clear. Yeah. <laughs> what, slide, okay, what slide number are we on? Next, Before we go well, on, well, what slide number are we on? We're we're on we're on the one with there's a uh, a fighter pilot a fighter jet. Number. I know it's number twenty two now, isn't it? We've gone back anyway. Right, go on. Okay, you're on the same one as me then, uh, QB. The fighter jet. No, I Which went next like? already. Oh, could you go back to the fighter jet? Uh... I, I know. Just because. It was the fighter jet. Before that was the ship. Yeah, I get, okay. I'm, I'm on it. Okay. So here we have it. Uh, a fighter jet receiving signals, ground signals. Those signals are going to uh, a ground station, but those signals from these satellites are also going to the to the to the GPS receiver on the on the uh, on the on the plane. Now, the plane would very likely have a GPS receiver on the top and on the bottom. Right, that's where because it can receive signals then from below and above. Right, so if there's high altitude balloon, whatever people want to believe, satellite or plane that's higher than it, it can receive information from that. Right, so here is a just an example of that. Next one, please. Here we have again uh, an airplane 
signal is going from satellites to the airplane to the ground station, and the ground station is broadcast through the range correction, right? Given the, so, it's using the ground uh, station again, right? Aerospace, right? Next one, please. Here we have again, same thing again, all in XYZ. You have DGPS and calculated aircraft position. You have um, uh, you have this signal correction, blah blah blah. Right. Next one again, please. Here we have again a ship um, getting signals and, and from a satellite, and the satellite giving signals to a tower. The correction data sent to uh, a, a sent to sorry a base station. The correction data sent to a tower, and then that correction DGPS correction signal sent to the ship. Right. So it's all. Sorry, Adam. That one stinks. Look at that. Look at what you're being mugged off there. If you're on a ship, all you need is those two towers. Yeah? As two towers. You don't need the satellite again, do you? You can perfectly well locate yourself, assuming they're the only two towers. Not the tower, but the one that does the, what's it labelled as? Correction data. That I find intriguing. That just stinks to me, Brian, as... as trying to stick something in the sky when you've got everything you need on the ground. Well, yeah, well, this is what I'm going to get to in a small way. We're going to get to how it actually works. I like what Adam's saying, though. I like where he's going. Tickle okay, smoke. next one. Yeah, you're right, Adam. No, you're right. You're, in the, you're heading in the right direction. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not critiquing anyone here. Uh, next one, then, would be the last one of this section, please, Kiwi. Right this is just a very basic one. Yeah, you have a control segment on the ground. You have, you have these four satellites on a glo and they're over a globe. And the, c the control segment uh, is going to give the, sh sh the sh truck uh, its corrections. That's basically it. And that's part end of that section. Um, so if you want to read out super chats or anything like that, or otherwise we'll go on to the next section. Looks like we're headed to the next section. Yeah, we're, okay. we're, we're, we're low on super chats right now. Um, <laughs> right, so one second. Uh, I'll, whilst Kiwi pulls it back up, um, I'll section it. Just that last one that's on screen again. There's a control segment. It seems to be a strange claim to me that's not been explained previously why land based control the satellites is that what they're doing now this seems to be a strange just strap on to cover anything that might be needed in the, in the future when you get when you question it um is, is there a function to that or am i you know that's integral to this because otherwise it again just seems that we're pretending we've got satellites and the things we've got on ground aren't actually talking to the truck controlling the satellite yeah well no, the satellite is giving the signal to the truck and a signal to the state to the ground station the ground th station is taking those signals and then correct giving the truck the correction for its precision what, that's yeah. the whole point of it so it's the, instead it's of just talking the, to the station which would give it which is the thing that's required to give it the accuracy it talks to something in space Ah, but and there's no gives it a rough on. idea that then tells it which ground station to tell it to do the function it was set out to do in the first place. Got you, Brian. Like it. Go, Brian. Sorry, this is the thing. This is the next section. Yes. No GPS actually works. Section three, the GPS receiver and its relationship to a signal source. This is what a lot of people don't understand. The GPS receiver receives, the signal source sends. There is no to and fro communication. There's a signal with information within it. There is a receiver for that information. That's it. The receiver does not have any communication, two-way communication with the signal. No, so it doesn't matter where the signal is coming from because that receiver can only receive it and work off of the information it gets. So the receiver's okay. so the receiver's not a transmitter. No, no, it just receives information and it has inbuilt information, and it has to work out where it is based off of that. So first slide there, after or well, sorry, next slide I should say after this. So it should show just a grey phone, a grey GPS receiver. Yeah. As you 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you can see on it, it's showing a compass on the front here. Um, <clears throat> what a receiver receives. It receives, uh, it's claimed to receive the angle to uh, an altitude of a celestial body, or sorry, of, um, of a satellite. The angle to it, uh, the altitude of it, and the, the compass direction of it, Right, so the compass, uh, uh, the azimuth compass direction of where that, uh, of where the sub point of that satellite is. Right, I'm going to use the word satellite just because it's easiest, right, rather than trying to deny the use of it. Right, so the sub point, which is the same as the GP point of a celestial body, that's what that's what it receives. So it receives the coordinates of that satellite sub point, uh, its angle, the angle to the satellite, right, the timing of the signal. Right, because I suppose we have to work out timings of the signal. Right, this is the claim. Right, using general relativity nonsense, and uh, it, re it received the uh, the azimuth uh, compass direction of it. Right. Now, within the receiver, it has, it knows supposedly the uh, let's just say the uh, satellite ephemeris. Right, satellites that have to exist for that to exist. Now, that could exist as a high altitude balloon situation. Right. Let's just say if you want to deny the satellites, right? Fine, right? Um, which I obviously would, but I'm not going to go into that now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But it also, within the GPS receiver, has the celestial ephemeris. A lot of people don't know that. I actually corrected some borders on it who didn't realize that, that the, the GPS receiver has the celestial ephemeris, ephemeris in it, and it uses it, the nautical almanac, it uses it all the time. Right, and that's, this yes, is why I went... Is that as a point of correction, I would have bloody assumed. Um, well, it, that question. way you can use... Go on, yeah. Just, just on, on the previous stuff. So you're saying it's just a receiver. So I assume they send something that's encoded with a, a GPS date, a, a, a timestamp from the GPS. And, and that well, way... I assume what? from the ping, just humour me, because I'm trying to work this out, because the, the claim you've said of what the other data that's included in it has confused me. Um, so I assume from that you, you're given, um, uh, or you can calculate the time difference from the point of emission on the GPS scale to your point of receiving on the GPS scale. That gives you a pingage, that gives you a speed of light distance to give you a distance it allows you to then triangulate your position um, well I'm, I'm confused how yeah I don't we're, go, we're gonna get to that it's okay well that's all it, is that right so it, far though just so basically it gets four signals this is what the claim is it gets four or more signals and those four signals will have angles to uh, to where the signal is coming from It'll have a time that the signal was sent, right? It will have a compass azimuth direction to the sub point of where that, that satellite sits over at, on the Earth. Just think of it as GP point. So it's the same thing. So uh, it will have what it gets. Yeah, it gets. Go on. On those four bits of that, the angles that's being sent. How the hell? Because this is part of, like, yeah, I will get to that. <laughs> I, you're going to get to it. Right, I'll show up then. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, we're getting to it, Adam. Uh, it's okay. What you're going? How the hell is this going? On? Yeah, that's what we're going to get there. This is what we're going to get there. I understand what you're saying. See, basically, can we the get there? Form, yeah, we will. The basics are: it, a GPS receiver receives four coordinates. You already said that. Some, you said yeah, it but like... I don't know if people are under... Yeah, but I'm trying to... Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. <laughs> Gee, Explaining because... to the dummy over here. Honestly, I'm learning. I'm trying to get this in my head. He said it three back. times. That, yeah. that works for me. Okay, so once again, I want to point out here the compass, right? You see the compass direction. And the compass is shown on the... Uh, that compass is pointing to the direction of the sub point of the of the satellite or signal right because it doesn't matter where the signal is coming from it's the direction of it it's treating it as a flat plane and giving it a direction 
So next uh, one, please, Kiwi. Okay, here you have the very thing that would be on the screen there, that is compass, right? This is a compass rose or whatever, or a compass card uh, in Azimuth, right? Because that's how they work, right? Next one, please, Kiwi. This and the next two, they are uh, what they call a sky map of satellites. So basically, they, if they put the receiver in the center there, if I'm correct about this, they put the receiver in the center there, all these different uh, G26, G21, all this, they're all supposedly satellites uh, that are in the vicinity of that receiver kind of thing, right? Next slide, please. Um, Kiwi, same again with this, right? Compass, again, right? The, if you have put the compass card on that, you will get the compass direction, the receiver will get the compass direction to the whatever, 16, 12, 3, all these supposed satellites or sub points. Now, a sub point, as I said, sub point can be a base station, right? It could be a high altitude balloon. All they need is, all it needs, this is the important thing, it just needs coordinates. And from there, and I'll show in a minute, I'm in the next section, how it finds its location. Next one again, Kiwi, right? Try and remember this when people are looking at this. Look at this one. This is, right, this is the working out via triangulation of a position, right? Blah, blah, blah. Next one, please, Kiwi. <clears throat> Here you have uh, three base stations, right? Uh, you back, it, Brian? Uh, no, no. Really, Cause, just because that last picture, right, is... Triangulation for something. Look at it. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can't do that if this surface is curving. So all these angles make sense, and they're invoking a north-south, which is what you, I understand, which is just still a two D. And this is a polar grid, but it doesn't matter. No. Nope. The way you're going to do it is 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 law of cosines or whatever you're going to use in in this stuff. Fundamentally, you can't calculate any calculate anything if the surface isn't anything but flat exactly even with a combination of a polar grid yep and and magnetic north yeah yep. correct All those things work you curve that surface everything turns to shit yep yes sir totally. yeah yep. good point exactly exactly the same is true for this slide run here with the where a sensor whose coordinates x y is unknown right so there it's getting three signals from three different uh three different base stations and it doesn't know where it is. It has to figure out where it is based off of those, the coordinates of those base stations. Uh, next uh, one, QB, please. Yeah, we're on the base station. Yeah, okay. We're on the base station one, base station A, B, and C. Do you want the next one, or is yeah. this good? Ne the next one, please. On from that. Next one on from that. Yep. So here we are again, just, just showing different examples. Just so people don't think I cherry-picked just something. I didn't cherry pick out and this is the, these are the official diagrams. Here we are again, right? Same thing again, three radii and they're triangulating and the, this thing about trilateration and triangulation, they're using both, right? They'll use everything they have to. They, they're not, they're not going to go, oh, we won't use trilateration or we won't use triangulation. That's not, no. They use everything they need to use to get precision, right? So next one again, Kiwi. Here you are again, similar to that one, uh, to the slide a couple of slides back, and you sh they're showing a radius to each base station and that circle, right, that's created, right, basically off that radius, just like celestial navigation. Next one, please, Kiwi. Here we are again with, right, uh, with uh, three circles, and now they're turning them into triangles, right? So you have three, you have a... Uh, <clears throat> Receiver 3, X3, and Y3, X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. And you have XY, which is where the target is that it needs to find this position based off. Right, there's stuff, I just want you to know, there's stuff I'm not going into here because it's only going to confuse things, right? But it doesn't matter because that stuff won't matter in a, in a while. Okay, next one, please, Kiwi. <clears throat> okay, here you have it. You have observer, right, satellite, Sub-satellite point, you have horizontal, obviously, radius, right? You have north, you have an angle to the satellite, right? Now, it doesn't matter if that satellite is claimed to be, let's just say, it wouldn't matter if that satellite is claimed to be 10,000 miles in the sky, and the angle to it was whatever angle uh, 
as long as that sub satellite point is in a horizontal, let's just say, from the receiver. Because that's how the receiver is going to work it out, right? It's going to work it out in 2D first, right? But this is an official diagram, right? Sub satellite point in a horizontal to the observer. Next one, please, QE. So you have three colored circles here, same thing where it's creating a triangle and the, basically between them and the, the, that's, how the, that's the basics of how the receiver starts to find its position uh, in the center, right? Next one, please, Kiwi. This is what they're trying to make people believe. So they're trying to make people believe that these two signals and the, 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 it's basically you know, this, somehow they're going to have to come up with an arc length type situation to try and find, the receiver is going to have to somehow mathematically work out arc lengths to try and find its position, blah, blah, blah. So next one, please, QE. OK, <clears throat> this is when things start getting tricky for, for the official claim. So if they're on a globe, right, this is the thing. If they're on a globe, their angle to the satellite here, right, has a baseline, which is going to be a tangent plane on a globe, right? But that angle, all they have is this angle here between the tangent plane and the angle to the satellite, and they have another angle between the, sat the angle that's that hypotenuse, let's just say, and the angle the satellite is supposedly making to its sub-satellite point, and in the, then the, to the center of a globe using a, a radius that was never measured <laughs> and doesn't exist, right? So if you go on to the next one, please, Kiwi, I'll highlight this. So they've actually highlighted it for me, and the next two are really short. So you have two angles here. The one up by the satellite is a dotted, uh, a, a serrated red line. That's one angle. You have a second angle down here, which is uh, an angle based off of a, a tangent plane, right? But how are you going to figure out the length of that arc length off of those two angles? You can't. This is, yeah, you can't. This is going to be very difficult. So if you go on to the next one, please, QE. <clears throat> this is what they have. You need for that, Brian, fundamentally. Well, yeah, but because yeah. It's, it's geodesics and the R is variant and there's maximum in the middle of radii, uh, do it on a geodesic shape is that they claim that this is being done on. It puts them in a quandary, doesn't it? Because you've got multiple. Hmm. What's Sorry. that shape in uh, geometry? Well, they're, they're blue highlighted. What is that? But, well, it's a, tri it's a triangle, but it's not. See, the mm. problem is, if you look at it, that's what they have based off of their mm. diagram. What they have is the sub-satellite point is, direct, is supposed to be down at that red X. And let's say that's the, 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 your device like that. I'm just using the, this diagram. That may not be a GPS device, but it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. So you have this angle that I've extenuated from this horizontal plane. If I took away that blue line, you would see the rest of that black line. This, uh, this, so not horizontal plane, but tangent plane. And it goes up to a line straight down from the satellite. They have that little angle there, and they have this angle here. So even if they work out this third angle here, right, which they'd have to work out, which the GPS receiver would have to work out, and this would be for one of four, how is it going to find out? Even if it worked out, how is it going to find out that angle when it has this angle and that angle? And if it does find out that angle, what does it tell it about its subpoint? Because if you turn this sideways, it's not going to be a right angle triangle. I That's can not do right it, angle. Roy. Sorry? I can do it. I can solve that. But I have to have R. Yeah? I can't yeah. do it without R. Yeah? So well, the only way is to pre-assume R. Um, and then you can do it because you can create a tangent plane. But it's not what's being done. It's not what's being measured. That's what it's... That's that's what it is postulated to being done. Um, yeah, that is so complicated. Um, but but see, it requires an accurate R. Yeah, but the satellite point. Uh, see, they're showing as I showed earlier. They're using the horizontal coordinate system, which is azimuth and elevation, and that's a right angle. The elevation angle is a right angle triangle. So if you turn, if I turn this diagram slightly to the left. You don't have a right angle triangle, which would mean the sub satellite point is not where it, it wouldn't be within this diagram. If you use a right angle triangle, uh, somehow it's not going to be where they have a place because they're out using a curved surface. So 
it like for the for the for the receiver who has not bought information right about the angle and the height of the satellite and its sub satellite point and the and the uh, compass direction for four places how is it going to do this on a globe for four places and find its location this is the problem it has to solve for its third angle it would have to solve but it doesn't know you see this is the thing adam it doesn't know this angle right see that where the satellite is it doesn't see that line that blue line coming down to the h and then continuing on to its sub point it doesn't know that that's the problem. It doesn't know that angle. It only knows this angle. That's the only angle it knows. It doesn't get information on this other angle. It has to try to work out that. That's what it would have to do under those circumstances. So it if you go on to the next... It knows, it knows theta e. Okay. Yeah. The question is, it can't know... See, the thing is, and this is the point, this is, as you said... It's a, it's a length. It's a, it's, it's a distance that's been communicated to the device, okay, um, via an encoded message. Okay, so you've got to is it trilaterate here? Um, you're using you're using lengths, aren't you, to to generate the bearing? Um, and this is the point. This length has multiple positions because the Earth's curving away. The different points that would have the same time could equivocate to the same time. You can't do that on a flat plane. Things become simple. Even if you do know R, which appears to be a big variance, and, uh, um, and maybe why, even if you add high up stuff, it would provide inaccuracy, even in their model. But I just... Yeah, but... I don't see this. how you derive any data a uh, useful data if the surface is curving yeah you get me yeah, because well, even yeah, if you the, the tangent it doesn't necessarily help you refine the point on the surface it's a possible tangent but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the point because you're dealing with the see, curve and all sorts of see the problem is is that the receiver doesn't know its distance to its to that sub satellite point so it yeah. doesn't know that yeah. angle that angle you have up there, that red dotted angle, it doesn't know that angle. So all you've got is the side, that's what I'm saying, you've only got the side length D, uh, which you yeah. want to derive it because you think, now on a flat plane that's easy, but there's lots of available paths on a curved surface that would deny that before you could then impose a tangent, because all you've got is D, so you... It, Exactly. You can't use a right angle triangle in that scenario. No. You can't do it in that scenario because you'd have to know that other angle, the one that has that red dotted line up near the satellite. It doesn't know that angle because it doesn't know its distance to the sub satellite point. That's what it's trying to work out. It's trying to work out where it is. You know, people it's think not, it's not going to be able to do it. No, that's the point. It can't. It won't be able to do it. And it's supposed to do this four times. <laughs> At least four. Wrong, Brian. All like yeah. all the IoT device receives is a transmission data from the satellite, which is time encoded so it knows how long ago it was. It then receives it to know the side length D. Yeah. And it receives it also sub knows, point information. Wait, wait, wait. It also yeah. knows the height of the satellite, the sub satellite point. It knows that the point of intersection it, with the satellite to the sub-satellite point, it doesn't know. Um, mm -hmm. All it knows is D. It doesn't know theta D or theta E, just given D, and that's what it's got to deal with. Yeah, it only knows the angle using, if we use a globe, it know, using a tangent plane, it only knows that side length and the angle, right? It doesn't know it's the distance along that arc to the sub-satellite point, so it doesn't know, right? It can't use see. It can't use a right angle triangle in this position, in this situation. You right. can't use them, right? right? Yep. Not not until it sets up the tangent, but it needs to know where it is to set the tangent up relative to the satellite in the first place. <laughs> right. That, but on that point, another super chat. Original D Rose. One dollar ninety nine. 
It's Quasimodo right angle from Notre Dame. It is indeed. I think we've done this to death. So, Bright, carry on, mate. <laughs> okay, ne next one, please, uh, Kiwi. This is now, the last one. Now, this, the, section. this is really good. I, I like this. You know what we're going to do because we're running uh, really late? We're going to end it with the next slide. We're going to end the presentation. Is, is, is that okay? Well, the, the... No, I, know, I know there isn't much left to go. The last three sections are very, they're actually just, they're not, they're, especially the last two. It's really only the next section. The next section is the section. All right, understand what I mean. All right let's roll. Right. Yeah, just for the next one, because they, they, after that can just be conversation. Uh, the, next, the, the last two portions are really just making a case for globe and flat. All right, let's roll. Okay, so as you can see, what it needs is those red lines to be able to work this out, uh -oh. and it doesn't have them yet. So, so we're, we're done with I'll, that slide. We're on to the next slide. We're on to the next section. Next section, then. Okay, on to the next section. Okay, how GPS actually works? Actually, works section four. The real way GPS works and why it works that way. Okay, first slide, please, Kiwi. Now. What I have here, right, you have a compass, right, card here, right, just like was on the, on the front of those GPS receivers. What I have is four, I have a signal sub point here up in the top in green. Look at the green line up at the top to the left, signal sub point. Now that can be high altitude balloon, satellite, whatever you want to believe it to be, right? Now the receiver, right, gets that, it needs one, it needs one signal needs at least one signal and the information of the coordinates information of one place, whether it be base station, something in the sky, whatever, right? It needs one, right? So we're starting with this one, the green one, right? Now, it knows that at that degree, which is, uh, let's say, 328 degrees uh, uh, northwest, right, that there is a signal Sub point or that in that direction from from the receiver. Now this is all based off on you turned off your GPS receiver in Al, in a, Albania and you've just turned it on in Texas, right? So any previous information it had, it doesn't have now. Is the information about Albania it doesn't mean that. This is for a receiver that doesn't have any information. It has to figure out where it is right there and then, right? This is right, so it's not like a, you've, it's been on all the time and it knows it's in Texas. It has to figure out that it's in Texas, right? So that sub point, that green signal sub point at northwest there, right? What it does is it shoots a straight line to southeast, right? Indirectly through, and it knows it's somewhere on that line. It also will know from obviously the coordinates that it, okay, it's in the United States. Now that. So point might be in Texas or might be over the border in the next state, one of the next states. But the point is, is that, is that it knows it's in the United States now, right? Now, based off of that signal sub point that it has and the time that it received the signal or the signal was sent, it knows if you just come to the celestial GP here in the blue, right, a blue serrated line and a blue, blue dot, it knows that at that exact time, at least at that exact coordinates, that uh, there, that, there was um, um, a navigation of the star right directly over this point. So now it has two points, right? And what it does with that is that runs that line at that, at that compass degree, which is the 282 west. It runs that directly to um, whatever it is, east, right? In a direct, the opposite. So it's an opposite. So we have two signals now. We have a signal sub point. At up northwest going to southeast and what that does is it creates like a pseudo sub point to the northeast or to the southeast and the same with the celestial GP uh, signal uh, using the compass card it creates a, 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 a pseudo GP opposite right I call them sub point opposite I just don't know what what else to call them right call them a pseudo point right so now it has one two three four points Two that it knows do exist, and two that are just opposites from that, right? Now, it also <clears throat> then picks up something from an aircraft, information from an airplane. At that time, there was, let's just say, 
um, an American Airlines plane flying right uh, off out to its uh, east, northeast, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> right, and a sub point of that, it knows its coordinates from that, and it set, runs that line directly through as well. So now it has three crossing lines, and it then also, uh, what's, the, what's that place, uh, Galveston, right? It gets inf information from a boat in Galveston, right, uh, 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 off the bay there, at Galveston off of Texas, a, sub, a ship sub point there, and it runs that directly through. So what it has is it has four actual coordinates and four pseudo coordinates, but it has uh, that gives it like four crossing lines, right? And that's how it starts to figure out where it is. It knew it was somewhere on this green line, and when the celestial GP co uh, uh, coordinates, when it done that crossing, it started figuring out okay, so that crossed that at that point. So if you go on to the next slide, please, QE. It then, what it does, it's going to take its first signal subpoint, right, and the celestial GP coordinates. So it has two coordinates, and it makes a line between the two rows. So that's creating a triangle, right? So it has compass directions to both of them, and it's now creating a triangle, and it can do, uh, and it can do that with some of the rest of them as well. So if you move on to the next one, QE. Right, so then, it create, creates a pseudo triangle in the opposite, basically like a mirror image triangle in the opposite. So now we're starting to have two triangles to really figure out where it is. Right, next one, please, QE, next slide. And it starts doing that then with the other. It can start connecting up the actual, the actual uh, coordinate point of the aircraft with the celestial uh, GP pseudo point. Right, so it's Right, this is how it starts to work, right? And then it builds triangles around itself, right? Now, remember, each one of these actual, let's just say it's when it starts figuring out the distances to any one of those points, it can then start making use that as a radius and make a circle, right? But it's okay because it's doing the same thing with the triangles. Next one, please, QE. And eventually, it makes, it makes a, a series of lines around itself based on the crossing lines, the pseudo points, and the actual points. And it, it, based off of all those triangles, it can then start figuring out where it is. And it knows it's in America. It knows it's in Texas at that point. Right? It's figuring out its... And, but for precision, if you go on to the next one, please, QE, it will use triangles with the actual coordinate points. Right? And that's... Right? As well as... Right? If you just go quickly to the next one, QE, Right, as well as using their radius, radii as circles. And just go back to the one previous, please, QE. Right, and that's how it finds its position. Because that's the only way it can do it. That's how GPS actually works. And you Not see, those are all straight lines coming together to vertex. Every last one of them. Yeah, because they're all, it's treating it as two dimensional. So once it has, see, the thing about it is, because all the mapping is already inside the receiver, right, that's green signal subpoint, that first subpoint, right, once it figures out, right, where all those places are, and it figures out its own position, from the mapping it has internally, it knows its elevation. So it figures out its X and its Y first, and then its Z, and then it can convert that to latitude, longitude, and height above mean sea level. And that's what it does. It only needs to find out its, figure out its X, Y first. Once it figures that out, right, because it already has all the maps it needs inside, and everything's constantly being updated with GP receivers. They're constantly updating the ephemeris, ephemeris and it's constantly updating the, it, its uh, mapping, right, if you're keeping it up to date. And that's how it finds its position. That's how it does it. It gets a 2D position first, and then once it has this 2D position, it knows from its own internal mapping that, okay, I'm at this point, or, or this is the point we're at, so we're at X uh, uh, feet above or below sea level. Here. That's how it works. That's what it's doing. Not any of these other things. And I don't care whether people want to believe in satellites or don't believe whatever. The point is that this is how it has to work. 
Now, it could do this on a globe, right? This is the thing. It could possibly do this on a globe with mathematics. Mathematically, it could work it out somewhat on a globe, but there's a couple of problems, right? So, it's number one, they're always telling us uh, GPS only works on a, on a globe. No, this is proof, everything I've shown here tonight, that GPS works on a flat plane and it uses a flat plane. But just this system alone here, that, that, that just this system would work on a globe, but it would also work perfectly on a flat plane with less mathematics. Also, you must remember, it's using Cartesian coordinates. Was, three, two and three dimensional Cartesian. I, I, I was just means, I was just gonna bring that up and snuff it right out. Yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. And that's what I said back in twenty this is what I was saying back in twenty whenever it was, twenty eighteen or nineteen, whenever I was doing those presentations. It can't those coordinates do not work on on a spherical surface. And to figure all this out, it needs to make all of that a coordinates plane. Or, or a series of 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 sorry, Cartesian um, uh, Cartesian systems. It has to. There's no way around it. That's how it works. So all the zeniths from all these locations must be parallel. So yep. people could, yeah, so if you try and deny that, you could say, but it works on a globe. But it also works easier and better on a flat plane. And if you look at the coordinates, the coordinates they actually use, well, you know what I mean? Don't, they don't work it, on a globe. It can work halfway on a globe until you got to the where you're at. On the ground, it's over. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's basically the, the last two sections were just making the case for globe and flat. I was giving the globe a chance, but also sure. taking it apart. So that's basically the, the presentation. No yeah. need for a part two. Is that, are we done? We don't need a part two because the last two sections are just it's just based off of, uh, it's just making an argument for how, for a globe and then making the argument for flat. That's yeah, all it is. Yeah, never, it, it's all over. Yeah. It's as soon as you yeah. say Cartesian, it's over. Yeah, well, they're also using the, if they're also, uh, if you want to just flick through them fast, the other slides uh, from number five and six. So if we go to five, uh, the uh, it's GPS and the case for a globe error. We are seeing the first slide is just a load of like, spheres based around the sphere. Second slide shows what's happening on the ground, which contradicts what they're showing. <laughs> yeah, so, right there, it's over right, there. This, exactly, and this is why I put that in. The <laughs> third slide then is showing this, which we've already figured out. We've already shown yeah. the, the, the receiver can't do yep. and can't. Make a note of it because it doesn't have all the information it needs for that. See, they put it in that one, Brian. Look, they had to put R in. Yeah. Yeah. Of course they did. Yeah, yeah, of course they did. Yeah. But, but if you've got variable R's based on a geodesic, then it becomes inaccurate, pointless, because you need to know the R yeah. to yeah. resolve the triangles. Yeah. They, and they don't have it. So bye well, bye, bye for that one. You need to know yeah. where you are, which is the point of what you're doing, to resolve the R in the first place. It's paradoxical, that uh, one. Okay, what's the next yeah. slide? Uh, GPS yeah, and the, the case, oh, and the case for, for a flat, flat earth. earth. I, my next slide would be Cartesian coordinate system. End of presentation. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. If you go on to the first slide after, the first slide of the sixth section, that's the slide that I used in back 2018, 19, mostly, um, or maybe it was before that, that, that slide there just shows yep. what's really going on, on the, on this, on, in reality, because the green square represents reality. Well, somebody's Go down here, next. somebody's down here in hell. Well, I don't know what they're doing down there. <laughs> All the measurements are happening on the surface. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we just quickly go to the next slide. Uh, that's just, that system, again, as I just pointed out, yep. it's, it's going to be using what they're showing on that green square on that, Cartesian. The yep. next one is their, is their contradiction. Do you know what I mean? They're, they have to make circles that interlap, right? Of, e uh, of, equal, of equal elevation. Yeah, exactly. And the ra radio, we all know radii don't bend. 
No. Radio is, or radi radius is a, cor a straight line. Yep. Um, next slide, please. They're using right angle triangles, which means the GP point here of this of the sun is all would be a satellite sub point, right? Yep. Uh, ne next one, please. Aircraft are using them. All, the aircraft use these coordinates all, and GPS all the time. Aircraft only fly horizontal paths. Lift accounts for weight. There's no way to account for the weight of the craft, aircraft. They must fly at an above horizontal pitch to fly horizontally. So how could aircraft be using them to fly around the globe? Can't be done. Next, next one, please. This is like if you uh, this is an X Y a three dimensional X Y Z uh, grid. So if you had a line through the centre of that, you'd be talking about um, um, you know how much above or below that line is your elevation, but your point. Uh, on the grid is going to be 2D, X, yep. Y, and there's no way for any part of that grid to be different in dimension to any other part. Yep. Next one, please. Well, just 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 to go back to that one, Brian, particularly with regards to the previous slide, aeroplanes. Where do you want me? We're on a ball. If we're on a ball, you see that grid suddenly, as Brian mentioned before, has diverging zeniths. Yep. Think about that now. That what that shape becomes. Uh, for aeroplanes and then it would start to distort also it would distort because it would have to distort yeah it, the, the, it's not, it can't work yeah yeah and um, if you go on to the next slide please kiwi where it shows a surface of a globe where i've added in some stuff yeah i'm there so, yeah yeah so it, this is the this is the ridiculousness of it you won't be able to use a right angle triangle because if you're if you treat the star as a as, as a satellite on a globe, you won't have that to work with. So you there's no way to figure out your arc length here because a little, little bit of it because you only have that angle between the purple line and the black line coming up. That's all you have if you're using a tangent plane. And uh, that's basically that and whatever error information you got about its sub point. So there's no way for to make this to work. It, yeah, this is work. going to nowhere land. Yes. Exactly, it's going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> next, <laughs> next one, please. Almost done. Well, just, just one second again. again. That, that, go back one, Kerry. Oh, man. Because they'll claim they don't have right angles, right? But they have look on the tangents that, that they've created. Oh, oh, I drew them in. Of, yeah, I yeah, know, but you you drew it honestly for the way their delusional uh, <laughs> fantasy plays out. Um. But you, can you see that we're supposed to be, these right angles are supposed to be uh, on the same plane to each other? Can you see how the mismatch occurs yeah. now when those right angles and the distance that the co-angle creates are relative to traversing the surface between one right angle to the GP of the star and one right angle to the observer? Um, from a, yeah, They're not commensurate surfaces, and that picture shows it. Beautifully. Yep. I I like how he gave him a ninety on on there. That's that's some bullshit right there. But I'll let it I go. I didn't want to call him out either. Then you're in there. All <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, we go on to the next slide. But only a couple of slides left. Uh, yeah, just horizontal reference. We've just shown it here. This is what they're using with selection navigation. They're using exactly the same thing. Oh, where'd Brian go? Cut out, Brian. Brian, did they come and get you? <laughs> uh, we'll wait on him. He might. Did he pop out? He's just gone quiet. He's, he's not. He's mute. Are you there, Brian? Hello, I'm back. Yeah, I got a phone yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. Give me a moment there. Shut up, Adam. Hey, uh, hey, just real quick, uh, Adam, or QE, you were talking about um, plotting a function. Now, a waveform, when you're talking about signals, what does that require when you're plotting a waveform function? Oh, shit. A Cartesian grid system. Yeah. <laughs> well, you need a straight, you need a straight line, right? Yes. The baseline. Yes. Or is there any straight lines on a globe? No. Not on the surface.
That's I'm what back they, there if you want to. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, that's a paradox. Go ahead, Brian. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm back there. We only have like maybe three slides left to finish off the whole thing. We're good. Go ahead. Okay, so I should be showing the one with the sun and the the, the horizontal coordinate system. Yeah, there if we go. Replace the sun. Yeah, thank you. If you replace the sun with uh, with replace the sun with a uh, with a uh, satellite, this is what they're claiming is happening. They're using right angle triangles and azimuth uh, to a satellite. Now they don't re as I showed with how as I, that was the whole point of me showing what I showed, where how it's actually working is what they're doing is they're using the compass direction. That's what they're, that's how they're finding it out. Yeah. They're, because, that's how they're finding it out because. It can, they, I'm not saying they're not, they won't use this system or they won't use the solving of the right angle triangle. I'm not saying they're not doing that or there, there is, that isn't happening. But the way I showed there, as you can show, like, why would a GPS receiver need a compass? Why would it need a compass? Uh, just... that, that, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. I should have, it should have hit me. It should have hit me before when you showed the compass setting on the Garmin. Yeah. That's a that's a good go, damn go question. Back. Go back a load of images where Brian's got the green square placed on the globe, and look at what north is when it's placed on the map. This is one of the things we've said with uh, ten. There you go, perfect. Where's north? Sorry, where's that point in? Is that pointing? <laughs> it's pointing up in the sky. Is it not pointing to the North Pole then? <laughs> uh, not the magnetic North Pole, now. Uh, these are some of the math. Uh, me and Brian look at things in different ways, but like these are just mathematical mismatches here. For me, we're not. As soon as you put North, it per works perfectly on a Cartesian system onto that ball. It no longer makes any freaking sense. Yeah, that's right. This is it a comes, powerful. It has an angular relationship. Th that you th never had before. Sorry, this is a powerful slide. I think. Uh, Brian noted that a couple times because this was way back in the beginning too. This is a pretty powerful slide. This this has a lot of ins and outs and what have yous, man. I like yeah, this. I like this one. I'm keeping this one. Yeah, yeah, keep them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is because it shows it shows non reality and yep. reality. Yep. Look at this, ballers. You try to reconcile this in front of one of us now. Oh, boy, it's your ass. Okay, we've okay, we got three slides left. Three left. That's it. Okay. Um, the next one is should show a word the words co altitude on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's just basically if that was four, if you have those where it shows those 60 degrees, if we take those four points as four. Uh, receivers uh, and they're at an equal distance from um, from um, satellite, let's just say, or whatever, a signal in the air, then that's what it's going to look like because they're using the horizontal coordinate system. Uh, next one, please, Kiwi. I think that's it, man. Is that it? I thought there was two more. No, nah, that's it. Oh, maybe. I don't know what happened. Because the uh, next one, actually, <laughs> it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. It's yeah. over. <laughs> it's over. Okay, that was a good one. All right, folks. And with that, I now I'll let it go. It. I'll let it show, and and how it fits on a ball. Um, to me, that is a yeah. That's the one. That is a good mismatch. That shows you how the calculations do not fit at the midpoint before you've strapped everything on calculated everything and put it back onto a ball this is kind of this midpoint of calculation where we're calculating things the purple and the blue lines should be one line it should be one color that's how it's calculated when mid calculation you try to exemplify it on a ball that's what you're shown disco ball earth guys look at it
Go on. No, just saying that. Uh, just saying that. Uh, that if we all lived on the globe, they would still be lying to us, because the way they say it works can't work on the globe. Because for a start, if you look at their claims of the receiver is told where it is by four satellites, that, that if we were on the globe, that's not true. If you look at the details, it's not true. It gets information off of four, from four, let's say, satellites, if we're on the globe, about the coordinates of the ground position of those satellites, and it gets an, it gets an angle to the satellite, and it gets a timing, right? So you'd work out the two-way speed light calculation timing. To uh, and an altitude, sorry, it's, that, sorry, it's getting all that information, but it's not being told where it is, it has to figure that out itself. And off of that information using a curved surface, it can't figure it out, it can't do it. If it, all it really actually has is an angle off a tangent plane and some information on top of that, of, of, a, of a coordinate, that could be anywhere. If you think about what a globe, that coordinates could be anywhere, it could be any massive distance away, you have no idea. So what, what in reality, that's the problem. So even if we're on a globe, it would still be like, you know, that's, you know, because that story is so fantastical. But we're not on a globe because, and GPS proves it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because it can't walk on a globe. But it can walk on a flat plane. And it can walk perfectly on a flat plane. And using flat plane coordinates, which, which it does. So. Oh, there. Yeah, boilers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boilers, yeah. <laughs> well, it must be flat to be a globe, I guess. Is that <laughs> yeah. really the next, next thing I come up with? Yeah, it, 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 it's, the, it's the flattest globe ever. You know what I mean? It, has, it must be flat to be a globe. That's the only way to work it. Well, it has to be measured flat, calculated flat, before you can present it as a globe. That's what you've kind of shown tonight with the GPS system to me. What it's doing, how it's working, how it's proposed to work. It has to work flat. Whatever, whatever it's done after it's located the positions, yeah, and however it demonstrates those positions afterwards, kind of irrelevant. But to me, you've kind of demonstrated the way in which it works it out. It, it is flat because of the simplicity of the data that's sent can't cope with the extra variable it has to have a fixed component i.e straight flat baseline and by that i don't mean a variation in elevation because it will calculate for that you can have a variation in elevation but you can't have the elevation dropping away at the same point and um, that to me says that's how it works um and, and so fundamentally however you present it afterwards it's kind of irrelevant um, because all the measurement and calculation is done on a flat Cartesian system. Well, yeah, exactly, because it, it's like, as I said earlier, why would a GPS unit need its compass? Because that, that was the, what I, what I, I was like, I, I remember saying to myself, hang on a second, does a GPS receiver have a compass? And I went and I checked and it's like, a compass does have. Why does it have a compass? What would it be doing? Why would it need a compass? Because it's gonna that that'll orientate it to a polar grid. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That, it makes that, sense. That, that, yeah. That's a conversion point between the Cartesian and the polar grid you've shown. That kind of makes sense because it's a point to orientate that 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 match of the two grids. Um, so that uh, like I said, go back to that first picture. We can put that north on the globe and suddenly it has no bearing anymore it doesn't orientate the surface the sphere does it it doesn't help <laughs> because it's not pointing um to the the same point on a, a map you've now wrapped it around a ball and as that picture showed it, it ends it up sticking it up off into space one point it might meet north at and their model somewhere past Jupiter. I don't know. You know, it's kind of irrelevant. The point is, it's not pointing as the maps display to a, a straight, flat uh, baseline direction of north on the map on the 2D Cartesian grid. It has relevance in the Cartesian grid north. 
has no relevance on, on when you strap it onto a ball with a presupposed flat grid stuck on the top, you know, a, a, a tangent grid. And I remember a couple of years ago in the surveying uh, presentations I was doing, I was trying to focus, get people's focus onto that. This is the thing. And we did focus on it, but the focus was more on the fact that they were begging the question by having all the zeniths meet at, at a central point. And this all happened after all the Cartesian measurements happened. They then begged the question, because what they actually do is they take all the measurements. Now, they don't actually do this. They don't like daily do this. They just get the measurements and go off. That's all the surveyors do. But the people who want to make claims about being a globe, after it's all been measured, they then add R. That's actually what they do. So the, all the, the information goes into a computer by the data unit or whatever, and it's then they add R in. <laughs> it's like, why are you adding in R to something that you've just measured as horizontals and verticals? Do you know what I mean? You've just shown that all this area that you spent a couple of weeks measuring is like, uh, like uh, parallel verticals and, the, and, and a parallel horizontal. And uh, you're going to add R to that. Do you know what I mean? So we did. We focused on the begging the question of it. But I was trying to focus on the, 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 that, just that diagram because it gives the game away. What's happening? What's really happening is that circle is not there and that center point is where that real that gray, green square really is because <laughs> otherwise north as you said is going off <laughs> to jupiter oh does do you really think when north points north as that picture says and I mean, if you hold your compass and you i always used to think oh why where do i have to point it you have to point it in their world on the tangent plane for the compass to even work. Now think about that. Look at the diagram. You have to point it not at north for the compass to work. Yeah? You can't be pointing the, the most concentrated point of the field. It's point away so that it's in alignment with the tangent plane relative to your position on the ball kind of denies how a compass is supposed to work in of itself. Exactly, because a compass is a, a, any compass in anything, whether it be a digital compass, a compass in a gyro compass, uh, uh, just a compass uh, you hold in your hand, compass, you know what I mean, that you'd hold at sea. It's just a horizontal plane. It's a, hor it's a circle. That's all it is. That's how it works. Nobody is Nobody is having the compass point at a 60 degree angle above the horizon. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not happening. You know, put the person on that square grid at, that was roughly around Britain, put them on the equator. Now, north, where does north suddenly become? It never <laughs> exactly. It points to the North Pole, does it? Ever. No, it never points north. It can. If you put them at the equator, then it's pointing straight up. Isn't it? Straight up in the air. It's going to Polaris in the globe model. Exactly. Well, it won't reach Polaris because those points never meet either. But to a point of dissolution. Yeah, but it just goes straight away. It never heads north, does it? it? It just heads away from the Earth instantly on that grid. That grid is not compatible with a ball. North is not compatible with a ball. No, it, it isn't because... You have, like if you go down to Sydney and put that gray, that green uh, square there, and where's North going to then? You have but to use South there to make it plausible, don't you? Because yeah, North but, uh, becomes ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it does. It becomes ridiculous. Yeah, because North is pointing off out into some uh, nether region. The proof is right there. They're not being honest. Well, the thing about it is, Neil, is most, most of the ballers, if they looked into GPS, most of them will get lost in um, the signals and the use of uh, speed of light and other elements within it and orbital velocities. When they look into GPS, they get lost in the globe. They don't see, even if they're 
they, I'm, not, I'm talking about a global who's just somebody who's just a normal person who wants to learn about it, not even someone with an anti-flat aircraft. They're going to get lost in all the in all the fantasticness that they add to it, as a po and they look straight past the fact that the coordinates, all the important things of how it actually has to work on the surface of Earth. They look straight past that because they get lost in fantasy. Because the globe is a fantasy. So they get lost in that. Yeah, but Brian, I understand that. But once you show them on a piece of paper, draw a circle, say, now get me, get me an angle from this curved surface. Because that's how everything's plotted. That's how we do celestial navigation. If they're going to be dishonest from then on, then they're not even worth it. It'll catch on. Well, we don't have a whole lot of communication with them these days because they don't tend to come around us um, too much. Not on, not on this show at all. And yeah, the but time they're listening, TV. Brian. I don't even know well, if they are here because... Well, I was going to say, that's the thing. We don't deal in ambiguity. ambiguity. We deal in, it's either a fact, this is the information, this is what it must be, or, you know, decisive, usually concise, maybe not always, but usually concise information. That's, that's not going to let them play around in the weeds of what is unknown, and that is where they want to be at. And it seems like most flat earthers want to be there too. Well, the thing about it is, is that t tonight's presentation, what you don't have to do, is you don't have to argue about the re reality, about the existence of satellites or not. You don't have to argue whether a satellite exists or not because it makes no difference to the outcome of the presentation. You know, we're not no. lost in, yeah, it makes no difference. It's still, so if satellites exist, then they must exist over a horizontal plane. Because that's how GPS works, kind of thing, and that was the whole. That was one of my directions with it. Because people get lost in stupid arguments. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, yeah. The only way to go, if you're going to argue about whether satellites exist, is you're going to have to go straight to the laws of thermodynamics. On phones that are wireless all go to a cell tower, like all of them, like, and from that cell tower they go then to a satellite, supposedly. That's what they say then. Although, in reality, yeah, it can easily be connected with cables over ground. Well, that's what I've, actually installed some, I've actually installed cell towers, and they're, it's all uh, fiber optic connections between cell towers. Oh, yeah. there you go. Uh, that's or, ground, or, baby. That's the story that I even used to get, right? They're, because people talk all over the place, and they say, oh, I'm directly cell tower, cell or satellite telephone. So... Uh, which one of those are actually directly collect, connected to a satellite or to a, a sat loon, if you will, right? It might be out there. It might be out there now. But, yeah, that's because people just bragged about it, like in the 90s and stuff. Oh, I got a satellite telephone. It would, people would have an explanation ready. And it would be, no, no, it goes to a tower, from a tower to a satellite. Never to a satellite directly. But how do they get the signals? Yeah, but see, that, but they're not. <laughs> they're not getting it from a satellite. Or if they are, it doesn't matter. Who cares? It, it only works they on just a platform. Add it on. It, they just say yeah. it's never the direct source. It's, you never it's... directly tap into whatever's supposedly up there. No, you're not. It, it, I mean, they try and say with a GPS phone, a GPS receiver that you'd have with you. Let's say if you're hiking in uh, a national park somewhere, like Yosemite or somewhere like that in America, or some part of Australia, they try and say that, that you, if you have a GPS receiver, you'll pick up your GPS there or whatever. And they might very well do so. I mean, um, I don't know if they have things in the sky. I know that balloons exist. I don't know why else is up there. I don't know what they can or can't do. But uh, uh, I exclude all that by showing that it can only work on a, on a flat plane. It can't work. Even if we were living on a globe, they'd still be lying to us with what they're saying, how they say it works. That's the worst thing about it. The ballers never look into things. They don't look into stuff. We look into stuff, and all they can come... Like, I can guarantee if they came back at me tonight, they'd only be picking on specific, little tiny specifics, little, you know, pit, sticking pins in me. That's all they can come back, because can, you can't. I've used official sources, like official things. 
You can't. All you can do is get lost in the weeds of all oh, the signals and how the signals work and general relativity and all this involved. Or you can just look at what's actually happening. You know, what's actually happening is, you know, there's no direct proof that there's, there's no direct proof for anything glo for a globe in GPS. There's only for the opposite. Well, All right, guys. We, what Hold I'm up. noticing is that, like, supposed actual telecommunication devices, or those are those types of devices, they have a certain look to them that they hang up, right? And even like 5G, they all look a certain new type. Well, those things don't have like a satellite dish above them pointing upward to a supposed satellite, like they never do. So that's telling, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot about it that's telling. It, it, it tells us it's time for the end of the show. Um, no, wait. Wait. Because we, we hit on kind of good visual thing. You know how you like that grid, the map pointing north, and it, it was pointing towards north but nowhere near. Yeah. Like, Why? Do you want that one again? No. Well, you can. Yeah, put it up. Put it up. All right, hold just up. Just for the viewers and yourself. Because I want you to put that grid on Sydney, Australia, <laughs> and tell me which way north's pointing relative to north now. Yeah, too funny. No one else. I'm not going to share it in Discord. I'm going to share it with YouTube. Go ahead. You know what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. You want me to flip it? Oh, you don't, we don't need it over here. But it was. It was How about that one? <laughs> oh, you can't. Can you see it? I'll see it in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, are you ready to round out? Yeah. Um, I was gonna make a couple small announcements and then head and send it over to you, but yeah, uh, do you see it? It's it's the best Sydney I can get. Where have I got to see it? It's on the live stream. Oh yeah, exa exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but of course you want the antipodal to north because you've turned it round. So that's Sydney. So now look where it goes. Draw that straight line north because that north is now south. <laughs> it's kind of close and approximate. But look how the, the 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 true north, the opposite of the north there, um, would be divergent to the point of yes. You can uh, see yeah, the divergency a little bit better, way. right? Yeah. 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 It's just laughable. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's over. I got to turn it back straight up. So, listen, um, it was an outstanding presentation, Brian. I, I'm, uh, listen, they don't have to get all the details out there. Uh, they don't need all the details. Uh, I know how I'm going to kill it. And, and number one starts off with the second law. I'm going to destroy the satellites. I'm going to just get rid of them, poof, into uh, outer space, no pun intended and then go directly for the kill shot, right to the Cartesian coordinate system. Just take it right there and just rock them, sock them robots. <laughs> it's gonna blow to the head. Blow to just flurry of blows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, it's it's going to be a flurry of them. Um, yeah, outstanding presentation. Thank you very much. We're, I'm going to keep this one. We're going to do this one Thank again. You.